Happy Sabbath and uh, good morning to all our viewers who are watching and joining us on this beautiful Sabbath morning. Today is the third Sabbath. Uh, churches are open and I believe uh, everyone is enjoying the fellowship we are now beginning to do together at our various churches around Fiji. For those uh, joining us from the com comforts of their home this morning, we also welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Wherever we may be worshipping today, I believe God is with us and together with the holy angels sent from heaven. May we acknowledge their presence and worship them with gladness and reverence. For God is uh, uh, worthy of our worship and he is holy and gracious, full of mercy and long suffering towards all of us. And it's evident today that we are all here worshiping because of his grace and mercy. I welcome all our viewers watching from uh, the coastal parts of uh, Vitilevu and Vonolevu and also the interior parts of these main islands. I also welcome those who are watching from the maritime islands around Fiji. Singatambu Marutaki, we came ni Ketesar. Aunitaka ni the Marutatiko, na biba kalunga tataki, kina biba kumbula ni kalu, sa botai kenta tiku kina baka tutu bata, emai na lomani madao ame adapa mai na singatambu. Taliungo. Sani tu masu, inda na maruta kana pengerabi, enda sabota itu kina, kana bota i ani kibikenda ena singa tambuongo. We welcome our viewers also, joining us from Rambi, Kioa, and Rutuma. We praise God for your lives, and we hope that God will speak to us uh, all the same as we worship Him today. I wish to remind everyone that uh, there are still uh, restrictions in place. Even if you are thinking of going to church, please take your masks with you, your phone with the Care Fiji app installed. It is also advised that you take your hand sanitizers with you if you uh, afford one. May I read Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 before we bow our heads for prayer. It reads, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. It is my prayer that whatever is in store for us this morning, it will be a means of blessing to each and every one. Remember, it is a law that you remain home if you are not fully, fully vaccinated. And please stay home and don't go to church. The decision is based on health reasons and one envisioned uh, to keep us safe and those we love and especially every church members their safety is of paramount importance anyone can be fined for breaching these laws and as a law-abiding church we wish to encourage everyone to adhere to these laws friends church members and christian viewers please stay safe and follow all instructions provided to us by the government for our own safety. May we continue to stay positive and keep praying for our friends, our families, and those affected by the pandemic. May we continue to trust in God and His will to prevail over us, His church, and the world. Let us surrender everything to Him and let Him alone lead and speak to us on this Sabbath day. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we praise you and we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for your leading and your providence, enabling us to reach another beautiful Sabbath day. And as we continue to worship you, whatever program that is in store for us on this platform, Father, may, we, may you bless it and uh, bless the the viewers as well. May it be a means of bringing us closer to you this Sabbath day, preparing us for your soon return 
And this is all that we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome to another Sabbath School lesson study. I know that we're all excited about this week's, this quarter's lesson, I should say. It's based on the book of Deuteronomy. But before we get into that, I have with me two very special people here on studio. I have uh, Taltala Aminyasi Kotambala uh, Lutukitonga, uh, Mbula Taltala, as well as Mrs. Uh, Mary Saini Mudaki Williams, Mbula Vinaka Madam. And we are excited about learning the lesson and diving deep into the book of Deuteronomy to find out the essence of love that God entails in that particular book. But before that, I will ask Taltal, Taltal Kerker, if you can just lead us into a word of prayer. Let's pray. Our merciful Father, thank you for this opportunity of studying your word. We humbly seek for the leading and for the guidance of your Holy Spirit. Enlighten our hearts and our mind. Help us, Lord, to be receptive to your words. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Last week, our lesson was entitled, The Everlasting Covenant. This week, it is entitled, To Love the Lord Your God. Our memory text is from Deuteronomy verses chapter 6 and verse 5, which says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Mm -hmm. Yes, love. Now, Taltala, you know, um, we talk about the book of Deuteronomy and the book of song, the Songs of Solomon. It has, it's one of those books in the Bible that mentions love a lot in the, Hebrew, uh, in the Hebrew context. And one of the most important words that we come across is the idea of Shema. Mm. Now, Shema is mentioned in the book of Deuteronomy, and it is derived from the uh, Hebrew word uh, Shema, which means to obey or to listen. Mm. Now, um, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, it entails the first mention of uh, a prayer, you know, the introductory prayer to Shema, and it says in the Hebrew uh, language, Shema, Israel, Adonai, Adonai, and Adonai Echad, which means, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Miss mm. Williams, mm. Um, you know, Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 4, what truths are contained in the, uh, the Shema? Thank you. Um, as uh, Maria has just mentioned, Shema is actually the introductory phrase, you know, mm -hmm. we can say to any prayer. So this specific prayer in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4, it has, like Maria has read, um, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And I think it contains a specific truth that affirms, mm -hmm. that affirms um, to the children of Israel the nature of God. Okay, the nature of God, that God is one, uh, that he is all alone in his own league, mm -hmm. and there's no other but him, and he alone deserves our loyalty, our devotion, and our worship. And I also see that particular phrase as an affirmation that we need to appropriate our right, our devotion, our attention mm -hmm. to God. You know, because most times... Um, our attention, our devotion can be partial. Mm -hmm. But we that Shema, it calls for entirety of your attention on this God that deserves the whole of your devotion. Amen. 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 Shema entails that there is no partiality. No, not at all. I, I like how you uh, mentioned that, you know, God requires complete devotion when we come into him. You know, when we read the Bible, we find that the Israelites, when they, uh, you know, when they come to worship God, I think the Bible tells us that they, you know, they, that time is specifically for God. They will shut out everything. Mm -hmm. And that is something really important and really encouraging. And uh, Taltala Deuteronomy, that is uh, verse 4. Moving on to uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 6, same chapter, and verse 5. Mm -hmm. uh, it says, you must love the Lord your God <coughs> with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Now, why is Deuteronomy 6 and verse 5 also important in the context of Shema? Thank you, uh, Maria. One thing that you will find when, it, when the Hebrews pray this prayer, the Shema, mm -hmm. they, they would see it with their eyes closed, with the intention 
mm. that they do not want anything to distract their mind from God. And you will notice that in verse 5 of Deuteronomy chapter 6, in the New King James Version, it reads, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. It's like all of you, all of yourself. Eh? Yeah. It's just like you know when, when the Sharma, you, you want to close your eyes, you want to direct your mind and your thoughts toward God. It's the same that is said in this verse with the context of the Sharma, your whole to God. Mm -hmm. It just is in this verse. Your whole heart, your whole soul, your whole strength is just all of you directed to God. Amen, Tautala. Man, thank you for that. You know, uh, I like what you said completely. Yeah. Eh? You know, they turn yes. off everything. I once had someone tell me that multitasking everything except when it comes to God. Because mm -hmm. he requires your yes. complete devotion. Yeah. And uh, now we think about, uh, you mentioned, I, I like how you emphasize the word your, you. Mm -hmm. There is a significance of the fact that God uses possessive adjectives. Uh, Miss William is the linguist here. Yeah? She'll probably be better um, versed in this fact. Uh, Miss Williams, what yes. would you say is the significance of the fact that the possessive adjective, your, is used in the singular sense? Yes. By the use of uh, the possessive adjective, your, it gives the fear, the implication that the word spoken is directed at you. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, with the finishing effect that uh, you have a responsibility and accountability mm -hmm. uh, as an individual rather than uh, as a group. You mm -hmm. know, your accountability mm -hmm. and you have a responsibility. Mm -hmm. And it also acknowledges the individuals mm -hmm. and uh, the individual's relationship to their God mm -hmm. rather than as a group. You know, it makes people take possession. Mm -hmm. uh, make them see their God as a personal God rather than a, a God, you know, whose attention is shared among the group. Mm -hmm. It makes you feel, for me personally, as if the God is mine. When he mm -hmm. speaks, it's really to me. It, his attention is not shared. Yes. And I Amen. think it is effective when mm -hmm. they use uh, that particular adjective. Mm -hmm. Amen. Personalizes it. Eh? Mm -hmm. You know, it just gives us that glimpse of what a great God mm -hmm. we serve. You are so important to him. Yes that he is seeking that relationship specifically with you. Mm -hmm. And to the viewers back at home, as much as it is important to be a part of a group, it is also even more important to know God personally, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. and yourself. Mm -hmm. Reflect on how God has led you and your personal time with him mm -hmm. and reflect on his love. Now, Tala Tala, what does it mean? You know, these verses, they, they mention loving God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. What does it mean to truly love God with all your soul, with all your mind? Uh, that's a very important uh, question, uh, Maria. You know, loving God with all mm. your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength, it means that our love for Him should be supreme over our love for everything and everyone else. Because he is the foundation and ground of mm. all our being and existence and everything else. Okay? Well, think of it. Without God, without the creator, without the, the genesis of everything, there would be nothing of us. Of, mm. of us and everything else that we, are, that we are looking to possess or to have. Okay? So it's just all God. And so we need to, our love for him, it should put out our love for everything else, okay? In simply put, it just means all of your person, it's all of you directing towards God. Directing mm. towards God. That is what it entails. Mm. You know, loving God is not, as Ms. Williams has said, mm. not partial. Right. All of mm. you and everything. God wants to know you, mm. not only you as a part, but you as a whole. Amen. Your thoughts, your ambitions, mm. your aims, your family, everything about you. Mm. And that is what it means to love God or what the book of Deuteronomy hints out or alludes to when it says to love God. Now, when we move on, we find that uh, also another word is that is used is fear. Mm. Yes. Right. Fear God. And I believe that uh, it's used throughout the Bible, but specifically in the books of Moses and the book of Deuteronomy, it, uh, you know, it, mm -hmm. Moses uses it often. 
Mm -hmm. uh, God uses it often to re remind the Israelites oh. to fear the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 2, it talks about fearing God. Uh, Miss Williams, yes. to you, what does it mean to fear the Lord your God? What does it mean? Okay, I like that. And I have a lot to say about fearing the Lord. But Amen. We'll try to be brief today. <laughs> now, fear the Lord is a responsive attitude to the knowledge that we have of God. Mm. You know? And uh, there is a beautiful truth that uh, Isaiah puts forward in uh, his book, chapter 11, verse 2. It's, mm. a, it's a beauty. And it clarifies how one can achieve this experience of fearing God. You know, uh, I, I've just told Taltalmini and I tell some of my friends, you cannot fully grasp the truth in the Bible if it's just knowledge you have mm. and no experience. Yeah. So yeah. to fear God, you get the totality of uh, the truth when you actually experience mm. it. So uh, I love Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2. All right, and uh, I hope you will read it uh, when you have the time, but I may come across it again later uh, in our discussion. So to those of us who, who understand the importance of this phrase, fearing the Lord, we would really want to know, how can I do that? Mm. You know, how because I need to fear the Lord. Mm. It seems to be that, that missing link I have in my life to achieve what God needs me to to add. Uh, to have, you know, to get to. But Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2 says that the spirit of the Lord comes upon you and you will have the spirit of knowledge, spirit of understanding, Amen. spirit of mind, spirit of counsel, Amen. spirit of understanding, and even the spirit of the fear of the Lord. So in other words, if you are sitting out there thinking you can master mm. this fear of the Lord inside of you from somewhere, it's impossible because as human, we cannot master the fear of the Lord. It can only be manifested through our lives if the spirit lives in us. So that's where we really stop. Mm. We must just stop trying to master the Amen. fear of the Lord. Mm. Because mm. Isaiah puts it, it's until and unless the spirit is with, within us, mm. then you can have that experience. Amen. Amen. It's important that we establish that relationship with the spirit, eh? Yes. So that we pursue that personal mm. relationship as we've been mentioning uh, with God. And of course, the fear of the Lord is mentioned in other texts in the Bible. We move on from the book of Deuteronomy to the book of Psalms to the book of Proverbs. Right. Tell, tell us, specifically in the book of Psalms, I believe mm. it is mentioned more than once. Yes. More yes. than once. Yes. Now, what can we learn? What is the psalmist's take on the fear of God? Thank you, Maria. On this, let me refer to a few texts, a few uh, uh, verses from the Psalms. Okay. I'll begin in Psalms chapter 2, verse 11. Mm. It reads in the New King James Version, Serve the Lord, not this, with fear and rejoice with trembling. You know, the Psalms, they wrote in um, parallelism. In other words, what they stated on the first line, they, they like to repeat it again on the, the next line, though, though they put it in a different way, but it means the same thing. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you read there in Psalm chapter 2, verse 11, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Mm -hmm. they, means, they simply mean the same thing, but they are put it out in a different way. Now, another one is in Psalm chapter 19, verse 9. Listen to this. The fear of the Lord is clean enduring forever the judgments of the lord are true and righteous altogether there's another one in psalms 34 verses 8 through to verse 9 it reads oh taste and see that the lord is what Spirit. is good okay Amen. blessed is the man who trusts in him and in verse 9 oh fear the lord you his saints there is no want to those who fear him now, when we look at these verses, these are just a few from many verses that are out there in the Bible. But when you focus on these verses, one of the main messages that is coming out that is reflected from this verse is reflecting us to fear. It's, it's, I'm sorry, it's inviting us to fear God. Mm. Now, when you invite someone to something, you, you would invite someone to, to, ex, to an experience which is um, more like uh, interest mm -hmm. that's the the way that i would put it i wouldn't invite someone to something that is very very fearful mm -hmm. and in this sense from the sami's perspective fear the lord is an invitation to worship 
It's an invitation to experience something, um, I, I would say, very encouraging. Something that brings peace and mm. something that would bring healing to a person's soul. So from, let, let me just answer it in a simple way. From the psalmist's perspective, to fear the Lord is to come in reverence and invitation to worship with gladness and joy rather than being afraid. Rather than mm. being afraid. That's interesting, Taltala. We'll, we'll come back to the definition mm. of fear shortly. I just want to emphasize on an, another verse that talks about fear. We find it in mm. the book of Proverbs. Yes. Proverbs mm. chapter 9 and verse 10. Now, uh, this is Proverbs as for the viewers at home. Mm. We all know it's written by David's son Solomon. Mm. Now, uh, Miss Williams, what insight did David's son uh, Solomon provide about what it means to fear God? Mm. Viewers out there, and I believe that the three of us would agree King Solomon is the wisest man who ever lived for a reason. Amen. And I think he is truly wise. Mm. And uh, from where I am sitting, King Solomon sequentially mm. outlines the causal effect of the work of the Holy Spirit in our life. Mm. That I have just highlighted from uh, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1, that the secret is really the working of the Holy Spirit. Mm. In our lives okay so when i look at uh, what isaiah have mentioned if um, fearing the lord or the work of the holy spirit is a fabric mm -hmm. the thread that is woven mm -hmm. to give form give shape give, give texture to that fabric is the holy spirit Amen. Amen. you know like i have just mentioned maybe it it is high time that mm -hmm. i recite isaiah chapter 11 verse uh, verse 2, it is the spirit of the Lord that will rest upon us, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of uh, understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. Amen. All right? So uh, Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 simply says that fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, mm. and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding, mm. which really in essence is what... Uh, Prophet Isaiah put in a nutshell mm -hmm. that these are the very things, the very things that we are, are, are searching, seeking after in this world, and it is just the things that the Holy Spirit will manifest through yes. you. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. So, like I said, King Solomon is not wise, mm -hmm. you know, for nothing. He is wise for a very good reason, and I think this is a manifestation of his wisdom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like how you uh, explained how King Solomon highlights on the fear of the Lord and mm. I related it to the book of Isaiah to the viewers back at home in your free time go into the book of Isaiah mm. medita meditate on it and read on uh, how God will provide the spirit mm. to fear the Lord he provides Amen. it we, pro Amen. we serve a God who provides for us Amen. Well, he, all he needs is our willingness Maria, I think the beautiful truth is you don't have to do any work Mm -hmm. huh? yes. Because some of us will try to come up with formulas on how to master these mm -hmm. things. Because we know they're important in our lives, especially for our salvation. But then see, everybody must just rest. We only seek for the Holy Spirit to be in our lives and everything will just come as a whole Amen. for us. Amen. And when we're, while we're still on the topic of fear of God, we find that it is not only mentioned in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. it goes on right to uh, the Old Testament, the yes, book of right. Revelation. That's Revelation right. 14, mm -hmm. uh, verses 6 to 7. Mm -hmm. uh, for those of you that are familiar about the three angels' message. Mm -hmm. uh, Tartal Amini. Now, in Revelation 14, we find that there is an appeal mm -hmm. to fear God mm -hmm. that is included in the last message, mm -hmm. uh, the last warning mm -hmm. to the world. Why do you think the, the, that it is being reiterated? in Revelation. Yes. Let me read uh, Revelation chapter 14, mm, verses 6 to 7. I'm reading from the New King James Version, and it says, Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. And come to verse 7, it says, saying with a loud voice, listen to this, Fear God and give glory to Him for the hour of His judgment has come and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and springs of water. Note that this message begins with this phrase, fear God. Mm -hmm. okay? But then you will find that fear God and give glory to him. Now I want you to, to, look, to look at it differently now. Look at the, I've said earlier, I've read from a few verses from the, the book of Psalms. 
And you will notice there that the appeal from psalmist to fear God is the invitation to worship. Okay? And one thing that we note as well, when we look at this, uh, fear God and give glory to Him. Now, give glory to God is not adding on to the fearing of God. Hmm. In fact, give glory to God is fear God. So fear God and give glory to God, they mean the same thing. Hmm. When you fear God and give glory to God, it just means the same thing. It does not mean that you give glory to God is adding on to fearing God. When you fear God, it just simply means you're giving glory to God. Yeah? Yes, but we ask this question, how does one give glory to God? Now, the Bible can give answers to this. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, it reads, Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and what? And glorifies your Father in heaven. So our good works is reflecting on our obedience to God's commandments. In that way, you give glory to God, and in that way as well, you fear your God. Okay, so that last warning, mm. okay, that is given in Revelation fourteen six to seven, is the call to every man, every man, in whatever tribe, whatever nation, everyone, including those that are listening with us this morning. It's a call from God to fear God. Means to give glory to God. It means it's calling everyone to come back to the obedience of the commandments. And that is the way, the essence that is provided in the scripture that we can show our fear to God so that we can glo give mm -hmm. glory, glory to God. God. Okay? Amen. Tala, thank you for that. Yes, to our viewers back at home, the word fear God, or rather the phrase fear God, means to glorify God. We mm -hmm. can say that they are synonymous mm -hmm. and they're often used interchangeably in the Bible. But sometimes we're, we get a bit confused about fearing and being afraid. Mm -hmm. I know. Now, do you think that the expression fear of the Lord also means to be afraid? Mm. I think, Maria, one of the problems which we need to be always uh, keep at the back of our mind and be always watchful for is the language, mm. you know, and our interpretation of the language, because which would stem out of the experiences that we each know. And I thank God that he never changes. Mm. And, and, and we are informed way in advance from Isaiah that his ways are not our ways, yes. you know. Uh, his mm. thoughts are not our mm. thoughts. So it is possible that when we think of the word fear, of the word afraid, it could be very different from mm. how God sees or perceives those words, you know. So for me, my favorite text, which put all of this in a nutshell, is in First John chapter 4, verse 18. Mm. I love that text mm. because, uh, well, to our viewers, it actually says, make sure you read, it's First John chapter 4, verse 18. Mm. There is no fear in love, mm. huh? but perfect love casts out fear yeah. because fear involves torment. Mm. So if you're asking me my answer today, at least from my growing understanding of our way of salvation, mm. no, fearing God is not the same as mm. being afraid. Okay? Mm. And this uh, dichotomy or contrast clearly implies that the attitude of being afraid, which often brings about a feeling of paralysis to mm. us from my experience, has no place in love. Mm. Huh? Has no place within love, which according to, to the scripture as we understand it, will bring about our fear of the Lord. Mm. Love will compel us, mm. like I said, Amen. through the yes. spirit mm. to fear God the way God mm. needs to be feared. Mm. So the way I, I, I understand the word afraid, no, mm. God mm. forbid me to be afraid of him. Mm. 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 I want mm. to fear God as the Holy Spirit manifests through me. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, thank you for that. You know, the the fear of God is not the same as being afraid. This not, we're not according to me. Not according. Okay. <laughs> and when we read the Bible, we find that when God says fear God, it's a different. F fearing mm. God is different in mm. the biblical sense. Yes, eh? yes. It involves love. Mm. It involves mercy. Mm. It involves glorifying mm. God. Mm. Now, what? But the reality is, some people are afraid mm. of drawing near to God mm. with loving reverence. Mm. Um, you know, let me, Madam read First John chapter 4 verse, 9, verse 18, mm. but let me read First John chapter 4 verse 19. Verse 19, okay. It's just a short verse. It is, 
we love him because he first loved love us. Amen. Pick that up. <laughs> well, this short verse it's reflecting on the many verses that are out there in the Old Testament, especially in the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy emphasizes the love of God. Mm. Okay, one thing that you notice is that God first redeemed them, and then I'm talking about the Israelites. <laughs> First, God redeemed the Israelites from Egypt, and then He commanded them to obey Him. Mm. So, in here, you you will take away the, the the thought or the mentality that they worked their way to to achieve or to actually have the love of God. Mm. But in fact, God's love has already been there, and it was through the basis that God provided everything for them. Then God want them to, you know, on the basis of the love that He gave, mm. then God want them to, wanted to, like, draw or attract their love towards Him. Mm. Okay, so there in First John chapter four verse nineteen, you you will find that before God seeks us to give our life to Him, He has already given His only yes. Son to us. Yes. So many are led astray because they hold the view of being afraid of God and they are being blinded to seeing that God is love and God is leading us okay, in, in his providence and in his uh, mercy and, and love which he shows through the life of Jesus Christ. In that way God is leading us to see him with love rather than you know a mean God. Mm. God who judges, God who is full of wrath. Okay? So uh, others are simply drawn away simply because they have their distorted view, a mm. different view, and they did not see the God who is love. All depends yeah. on perception. Yes, yes. Depends yeah. on our perception mm. of God, and our perception mm. will depend on our understanding. Mm. When we understand the character of God, we will be able to understand the essence of Islam. Mm. Talatala, you mentioned something about obeying God. I just want mm. to read out Deuteronomy chapter 11. Deuteronomy chapter 11. Verse 1, and it says, You must love the Lord your God mm. and obey all His requirements, mm. decrees, regulations, and commands. Yes. What yes. comes first? Loving God or obedience? Is that for me? Yes. Mm. I think that has to be mine. Mm. Um, I believe, just to directly answer the question, um, I believe loving God must come before obedience. Mm. Loving God. This morning I shared, because I, I am really passionate about mm. studying Sabbath school lesson, I shared with my friends, mm. and Min here is one of them. Uh, I told him, you know, mm. it, it's important that today we sit our mind, mm -hmm. you know, and reevaluate our lives. Why exactly are we doing the things that we do? Why? Mm. Is it our fear of eternal death? And just because we want to enjoy eternal life, mm. if that is our case, then uh, I told them we are not understanding the way mm. of salvation right. Mm. Then we are only ad uh, adhering mm. to God's instruction and commands to solicit love and approval. Right. You know, it is, but th that that is really messed up mm. because we are supposed to love God first. And our love for God, which the Spirit will instill into us, will compel us mm. to obey Him. Yes. You know what I have already mentioned earlier, viewers? We must just rest because we cannot master mm. the obedience that God needs us to have. I mean, you and I can master obedience for a while and mm. then you and I will get exhausted. Mm. And then we will just be back to our old self. Mm. You know, unless and until the love of God is in us through the Holy Spirit, only then... Can you obey the way God wants us to obey? So yes, definitely, the love of God must come before obedience. Amen. The love of God must Amen. come first. Amen. Amen. You know, when Jesus came into this world, He came to live out that love, mm. to reflect mm. it not only in His teachings, but more importantly, through His works. And uh, Tatala, um, what teachings of Jesus reinforces the idea of love, that love should come first and then followed by obedience? Mm, especially in John chapter 14, verse 15. Mm. Okay, it reads, if you love me, this is the words of Jesus, if you love me, keep, keep my, my commandments. commandments. So the evidence, what people see is you following the commandments, but you are following the commandments not on the basis of wanting to earn Jesus' love, mm. 
but on the basis that you are loved by Jesus, yes. that you are loved yes. by God. So love to God must always be expressed by obedience to God. Amen. Okay? Mm. That has always been the case and it always will be. Of course, we witness that when we read in the pages of the scripture. And this obedience to God means obedience to his law, the Ten Commandments, which include the Fourth Commandments, the Sabbath as well. No, keeping the fourth commandment is no more legalism than is keeping any other nine. Okay, if you are saying that you know this is for for everyone, if we say that keeping the fourth commandment is legalism, then how about the keeping of the other commandments? Yeah. So when you keep the commandments of God, it's it's not about you trying to be right, but because you see the love that God has, you know, manifested through you in that way you are keeping God's commandments. Mm, yeah. that, that is reflected in the teaching of Jesus. Okay? Yeah. Thank you, Maria. That is the and that is the essence of love. Love yes, is reciprocated. Right. You know, once we have that love for Christ and we understand his love mm. for us, there is no two ways about it. It just mm. becomes manifested yes. through our actions. Amen. And the Apostle John also supports the mm. idea of loving God. Mm. And, you know, that loving God is demonstrated through mm. our obedience mm. in uh, John chapter, uh, first John chapter 5, verse 3. Uh, Miss Williams, would you like to? Yes. Um, somehow I feel I am I'm advocating very strongly for the Holy Spirit this morning. Amen. Amen. And I am actually, because we believe that it is the Holy Spirit that yes. works in and through us the perfect will of God mm. in our lives. Amen. Okay? So I believe it is the working of the Holy Spirit that will awaken in us mm. the deep awareness and grateful um, what did I read? realization of God's enduring mercy that has put pardon on our mm. sin. Mm. And when we continue to meditate on our Savior's uh, ultimate sacrifice for us. It is going to, to generate in us a feeling of love mm. and sorrow and we are going to long to give honor, mm. honor to him and this will lead to a life of personal sacrifice. Mm. You know, personal sacrifice for the sake of our God's command which we would then see as a privilege to obey. Mm -hmm. You know, I think there's a very big difference uh, when you see a commandment as as uh, imperative as it is to obey, rather than when I when I see it as a privilege to obey, mm -hmm. it's almost as if I owe it to God mm -hmm. to obey the to commandment. Obey. I think that is the position that we are supposed to be in mm -hmm. to see the commandment of God as a privilege to obey mm -hmm. when we fully understand mm -hmm. what God is and mm -hmm. what God has done, not only in in a as a creator, but as our redeemer. Amen. And only then can we see obedience as a privilege. Mm. And when we see obedience as a privilege, it does not become a burden. Not yes. at all. It becomes a joy. It becomes a joy. Amen. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, we are doing it like, uh, you know, because it's a requirement. That mm. is what we're doing. And and sometimes compliance with God's commandment it's can tiring. be unacceptable. It's tiring. It becomes tiring mm. for us. And not only that, it is unacceptable to mm. God. Mm. Yes. Because he did not make us to become puppets mm. or robots. Mm. Tala, Tala, would you like to uh, share on that? Uh, you I'll pick on two texts. Okay. Matthew chapter five verse eight. Mm. Okay. This is this is a, a I would say a rebuke mm. okay, to those who who think that they, what they are doing will earn them the love of God. Okay. In Matthew chapter five verse eight, here is how it is: These people. Okay. In fact, it was Jesus quoting the Old Testament against the Pharisees mm. and he says, these people draw to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is yeah, far, far from, from me. And there's another one uh, that uh, I mean, I believe uh, viewers, you can look at this in Luke chapter 18, verse 10 to 14. There is a parable being said there by Jesus about a Pharisee and a tax collector that went to the temple to pray. Okay, the Pharisee, he went and he prayed and um, he looked up to, to heaven and he said, Lord, thank you that I'm not like that tax collector. Oh. And then he boasts about what he did, okay, what he has done. But this tax collector, he wouldn't even dare look up to heaven. He bowed his head, then he touched, he touched his bread and he says, Lord, forgive me. 
I am a sin. Okay, mm. and then you, you will find that in the end of the, the parable, Jesus said, "I tell you the truth that, that this tax collector went away, or he goes away, justified before God." Okay, but the point is this: in looking at those two uh, passages that I have just given, Matthew five eight and Luke chapter eighteen verse ten to fourteen, you will find two very important lessons. Okay, about you know uh, being standing right or in, in terms of uh, following the commandment. One is people are not justifying by just proclaiming with no action. Mm. You may you just say it, but you are not doing mm. it. Okay, that's a rebuke to God. Mm. God, in fact, God rebukes that. And another one is you emphasize on following. Okay, on following the commandments and you think that on the basis of your following the commandments, you are justified. That is, you know, God rebukes that and it's unacceptable to him. Mm. When you think that you are following the commandments and you are justified by it. Even Jesus says in, in John chapter 5 verse 39, you, uh, you think that by following or by studying the scripture, you will have eternal life. No. No. Eternal life, you refuse to come to me, Jesus told the Pharisees. You refuse to come to me to have eternal life. Eternal life is, is, is given only through Jesus Christ, on the basis of your relationship with Jesus, not on the basis of your works or of your mm. following the commandments. Because we are justified by faith and yes. grace and right. not necessarily mm. our works. Amen. Now, uh, as we're, we're moving on, we also find that Jesus also regarded the instructions recorded by the prophets of Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 5 as mm. well as Matthew 22. Uh, Ms. Williams, you were sharing. Yes. Yes, of course. Now, let me just uh, read through the portion of Matthew chapter 22, verse 38, 30, 34 to 38 that mm. I will be sharing mm. from. And uh, also Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. Okay, from Matthew, Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. To thee, this is the first and great Wait, commandment. Right. When in actual fact, Jesus was actually quoting from Moses Deuteronomy uh, in chapter 6, verse 5, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, um, Jesus, as we see from Matthew, regards the instruction given by, by Moses as the first and the greatest commandment. Mm -hmm. So, Jesus clearly implies how our love and affection is to be appropriated. Mm -hmm. You know, first and foremost, it must be directed to, to him. God. Okay? So, in truth, when God's spirit, here I go again, mm -hmm. when God's spirit start to do its regenerating and renewing work in our lives, our love, our affection will be directed automatically to God, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And I believe as soon as that is directed there, all right, mm -hmm. then our affection and our love will go to others, mm -hmm. all right? And uh, then whatever is left will be directed to you, yeah. which is opposed by the principle, life principle that the world is advocating. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the most disappointing things that I have learned in my years of study is, is this true that the world is advocating that you cannot love anybody else unless you love yourself mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. I mean, how much of her her heresy is that? Mm -hmm. I hope nobody else will, will, will fall into the trap mm -hmm. because you need to love God first, mm -hmm. others, and yourself later, mm -hmm. you know, and do not be dis deceived by the fact that you must love yourself first. Mm -hmm. Only then can you love others. Mm -hmm. So I think we must all set the Bible, the scriptures as our standard. If God mm -hmm. says that is the first and the greatest commandment, then let it be. Let everybody right. else be a liar. Mm -hmm. Let God alone be right. the truth. Mm -hmm. Amen. To our viewers at home, to understand love, you must understand God because mm. God mm. is love. Amen. Amen. And only in that way will we be able to reflect that love to others. Mm. Tautala, Ms. Williams highlighted something. Mm. She said motivation. Now, mm -hmm. what motivates us to love God with all our heart? What do you think should be, or rather, what does the Bible entail should be the motivation behind loving God? Thank you. I, I believe we've looked at these verses earlier, but let me just uh, go back to them. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 37. Let me read this in the New King James Version. And because he loved your fathers, 
Therefore, he chose their descendants after them. And he brought you out of Egypt with his presence, with his mighty power. Now, let me go to Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 7 and 8. Read this. The Lord did not set his love on you, nor chose you, because you were more in number than any other people. For you were the least of all the people. But because the Lord loves you, and because he would keep the oath which he swore to your fathers, and the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand, and redeemed you from the house of bondage, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And yes, we've looked at First John chapter 4, verse, uh, verse 9. Okay? We loved him because he first uh, loved us. Now, just as God doesn't merely say he loves us, but he has revealed that love for us by what he has done and still does, God's people too are to show their love to God by their actions. Okay? Mm -hmm. And in this text that we have just looked at, um, I did not have the time to read all through the text, but in those few texts that we have just looked at, we see that the love towards God is inseparably linked. I hope I pronounced that uh, right. That's fine. Okay? Inseparably linked to obedience to Him. So when you love God, and you obeying God, it, it, it just means the same thing. It just means the same it, thing. It's, it's, they are not separated. No. Is that the right way to say yes. it? Yeah. They are not separated. Loving God and obeying God mm. is just the same thing. Okay? Amen. Loving God. And that should be the motivation mm. behind yes. obeying God. Right. Because love, love uh, mm. because of the love that God has given Give us, us, that should motivate yes. us to obey Him. And, and in obey him, mm. we love him. We love him. And when we have that perception, we pursue love in the correct manner. It reminds me of a story in the Bible of a young man that came to Jesus, Tal Tal, you know. Right. And uh, he told Jesus, what should I do that I must end the And Tal, Jesus told him, okay, uh, you know, thou shalt not murder all these right. commandments. But the first commandment, he mm. didn't understand it. Right. When mm. Jesus told him to give everything and follow him, to show, reflect that love in his That's actions, right. this young man didn't understand it. Mm. Now, uh, as we're coming to a close, just... How do you think does the Ten Commandments and the First Commandment relate to each other? Mm. I think um, how the first and the Great Commandment, which uh, Matthew has mm. mentioned, eh, mm. that we must love the Lord our God with all our hearts. Yes, um, the thing is, I believe the Ten Commandments clearly outlines the broad application of how our love to God must be expressed. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you look at the Ten Commandments, the first four mm -hmm. is actually uh, our responsibility towards God. You know, mm -hmm. I, I talked about how we appropriate our uh, our attention, our devotion mm -hmm. to God and others. So the Ten Commandments uh, enshrines mm -hmm. all our responsibility. The first four to God, and the six our social responsibility mm -hmm. to men. I think that is the relationship that the Ten Commandments outlines clearly to us how we can express mm. our love to God. Our love Amen. to God. Amen. The Ten Commandments and mm. the First Commandment are just synonymous, you know? Yes. They're quite the same thing. Now, uh, I know that when we experience this renewing love from mm. God, it, uh, you know, it compels us to share His love with mm. others. Now, just a, a general question. Has there been a time where God's immeasurable love for you compelled you to love Him and to reflect that love back to Him with all your heart? Thank you for that uh, question, uh, Maria. You know, uh, many times when we are asked this question, we want to think of uh, something very dramatic that yes. happened. Yes. yes. And then, yeah. we, then, we, then we have the courage and, and the, the boldness, oh yeah, I'll share about mm -hmm. this. Sad. But we never even think of, you know, you woke up this morning. You are yeah. sitting there watching and looking at us. We are just the same as you. We are human as you are human. We have weaknesses as you have. And let me say this. Uh, I, I will say this with confidence that, you know, it's not because of our knowledge and our wisdom and mm -hmm. our special ability that we are given the privilege to come and share about God's Word. But it's simply because of God's love and grace yes. that He has given us this opportunity. We, this is, we count this as an opportunity, yeah, an opportunity. to share. Privilege. Right. It's a privilege, right, to share God's Word. So uh, let me say this. 
It's the fact that you understand it, that you realize that everything is provided for you. Amen. And even to something that you cannot see, that is eternal life. When you're able to understand that, it will compel you. Mm. It will move in your heart mm. to love God and to obey God. Even to these simple things that we, we tend to undermine as, you know, I'm a father. Mm. Okay? Maybe you are someone who is a father. And you look at how God has provided for your family. Amen. What can you do? I, I'm, I'm a, a brother. Okay? I, I'm, I'm a member of a family. You look at the members of your family. How are they doing? How has God provided? What will that compel you to obey him? Will that compel you to love him more? Now, I'm, I'm, some, I'm part of the community. Mm. I'm related to these uh, ladies that are seated beside me. We are part of the community. And God has been providing for us. Mm. What more can we do? Mm. Oh, the least that, that we can do is just come in humble obedience. Mm. Not so that we can go earn no. God's no. favor. No. But because love, God loves us so. Yes. It's a simple, it's maybe a humble response that, mm. that we mm. human can do. Amen. It's just come in obedience to God. Mm. That's all that, that I can say. Amen. Yeah. Maria, come mm. in obedience to God. Mm. To love the Lord your God. That is the title of our lesson for this week. We've studied on how to love God, on what it means to love God, to fear God, and of course, to obey Him as well as the greatest commandment. And we find that at the base of all this, the foundation of it is love. Amen. Mm. So this morning, or wherever, or what, whatever, wherever you're joining from, heaven invites you to join in with that relationship with mm. God. Amen. And as Miss Williams has highlighted, all you have to do is to be willing. The Spirit will provide Amen. everything else. Amen. Mm. And the willingness is all that matters to God. Amen. But our mm. obedience can only be manifested in our lives if we truly love Him. Amen. So to our viewers, we encourage you to study the book of Deuteronomy, study the lesson, and not only that, to pursue that relationship of love with God. Mm. And to fear Him, not in the human sense, but in the biblical sense, mm. where fear is associated with glorifying God. Amen. Amen. As we come to a close, I'll just ask Miss Williams, can you grace us with a word of prayer? Thank you. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the privilege that you have given us again today to learn more of you, to learn more from you uh, at this hour. Father, your words have been heard, mm -hmm. and I'm asking, earnestly entreating you that your spirit continue to work its mighty power in our lives, to do in us exactly what you need it to do. Father, at the end of all that we are doing, at the end of our life, it is your kingdom that we want to be in. We ask that you will continue to hold on to our hands, continue to lead us as we move through each of our days. May you help us through your Holy Spirit to learn more of you as we dive into further, deeper into the book of Deuteronomy mm -hmm. over the next few weeks. Thank you so much, Father. We ask that you will forgive us for sins we may have still left unconfessed before you. This is our prayer in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Brenton Jackson decided to put God first in his life. What can we learn from his story today that will help us put God first in our own lives? Brenton was born in New Zealand to a loving and caring Adventist family. He learned about Jesus and God's love for him. Everything was going well until he was 13 years old when his parents got divorced. Now, this experience was so shocking for Brenton that he left the church and lived for many years without any connection to Christianity. Things started to change once again when he found himself jobless and on the edge of homelessness with nothing left but $200. How did this happen? He asked himself. At his lowest moment, Brenton remembered the love of God he experienced as a child. 
He remembered the sacrifice his parents made in putting God first with everything they earned. Realizing that they never lacked anything at home, he made a decision that changed his life. In trusting his future to God, Brenton trusted his last $200 to God, donating it to a local Adventist church. As with the widow in biblical times, Jesus certainly watched as Brenton gave him everything he had. What happened next was that everything he needed was miraculously provided, and it continues to be provided today. Brenton is now a fully devoted disciple who puts God first in everything, thankfully recognizing that everything he has comes from God. Ellen White reminds us that the Lord does not need our offerings. We cannot enrich him by our gifts. Says the psalmist, all things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. Yet God permits us to show our appreciation of his mercies by self-sacrificing efforts to extend the same to others. This is the only way in which it is possible for us to manifest our gratitude and love to God. He has provided no other. Brenton put God first throughout his adult life. His determination inspires us today. Jesus gave up everything to redeem us, and his love compels us to put his kingdom first in our own lives. As we return the tithe and our promise offering, we are challenged to put God first. Ay nanong te kukurei 
Kristo. Kambulai kenda rupin, bibi. Ni sana mula ya ato mai kadwan. Ni ongona ya mo. Erau mai semati kita. Na tito ang muli nona ipala pala nana tamat. Kay na tawa ba kay yala yala kay nana lo lomani. Na nona taru ka lo. Welcome to Divine Service. I welcome the heavenly host whom I believe are worshipping with us this very moment. Wherever we may be tuning in from, whether from your home or from your car or whether you are sitting outside in the comfort of this weather, uh, joining in uh, virtually, we welcome you. We also would like to take this time to welcome the Godhead. Uh, the Creator God, the Father, uh, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. This is the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad. If you have just joined us for divine service, I welcome you too, and I hope that you will be blessed as we worship together virtually this Sabbath day. Nanda usia mati kau mai, enak tahu tak kau nubai kor lilebu. Wei kemunio ni usia mati kau mai, enak nubai anu anu, mai naya tu asawa, lalu mai binti, kandabu, mai naya tu lau, kena nubai tholo ni nanda benua. Aku kini nubai kemuni, enak lolo mani nanda turanga. Aku nui takkan ini dalam maru takkan, nanda nanda bing kerabi, wati kini nak lalu, enak singa tambu ongo. This Sabbath is Creation Sabbath. Our speaker this morning is Elder uh, Shivan Ostring. He is the Director of Ministry and Strategy at the South Pacific Division Office in Sydney, Australia. Elder Ostring, we praise God for your ministry and uh, also, more importantly, for accepting the call to speak to us today, especially as we mark this Sabbath as Creation Sabbath. We can only commit uh, your life to God, your work, your family, and your ministry, and pray for many more fruitful years of service in God's vineyard before His return. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation, and we pray that God will speak through you, and may God be praised, be praised alone as you speak to us. 
As people and children of God, let us make this Sabbath a delight, holy and honorable. May we not seek our own places, but in everything we do, may God be exalted and may we worship him in spirit and in truth alone this holy Sabbath day. Let us pray. The mighty mami na kalu lebu mai loma langi. Vi na kabu lebu na nomuni loloma. Vi na kabu lebu na nomuni tumberki mami mai me kima mi adabu tal mai. En dua tal na singa tambu talai. Ki mami masu ni kuni na liuta ki mami ena ni mami bengrabi. We commit to you, Father, the messages that we are going to hear today through your servants. May you speak to us, touch our hearts and our lives. Prepare us, Lord, for your kingdom. Make us good stewards and make us good servants of your vineyard. Thank you for the lives of uh, those who are watching from home. We know, Father, that many have resumed uh, worship in churches. May you bless us all the same. Whatever our circumstances are, we can only commit everything to you for your will to be done alone. Thank you again for listening to our prayers. And this is all that we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The artistry and design so prevalent in nature offer more than a momentary escape from the anxieties and distractions of life. For mountain peaks, waterfalls, pounding waves and flocks of birds on the wing are each endowed with a purpose that, when understood and embraced, is nothing less than life-changing. And for anyone who pauses to ask how or why, a timeless message calls out from these wonders to touch our hearts and lift our eyes beyond the natural world. The Apostle Paul recognized this universal truth in his letter to the church in Rome. Since the beginning of the world, God's invisible attributes, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through the things he has made. Stunning displays of God's invisible attributes are evident throughout the created order. They are part of what is often called God's general revelation, a message unhindered by barriers of language, culture, or time, and broadcast every moment to every corner of creation. Consider just a few examples. In the size and structure of the universe, we catch glimpses of God's inconceivable power and glory. While the precise settings of the Earth's axial tilt, rotation rate, and ideal distance from the sun all reflect His wisdom and foresight. The astonishing variety in the estimated 8 million species of animals and plants that inhabit our planet showcase God's sense of artistry and design. And in the predictable movements of the times, the changing of the seasons, and the extraordinary efficiency of the water cycle, we can sense His unwavering faithfulness and provision for life on Earth. God gave us a world that if we give it half a chance, testifies reliably to Him. That testimony, that voice that comes to us from nature, only gets stronger and more beautiful the more you know. And it's beautiful to contemplate the God who had this in mind when He created us, human beings, in His own image, put us on this planet, to appreciate, to discover these things and learn about them and through them to learn about Him. Now think about what that really means. If God created everything in the universe, then He's connected to every molecule of water, fragment of coral, 
and creature that moves. So nothing that exists is random or meaningless. Instead, as we journey through life, we're actually traveling through a gallery filled with masterpieces, all bursting with purpose and design. And each is a revelation of the Creator's existence, power, and love. May these wonders open our eyes and hearts to the reality and presence of God. It's wonderful to be able to join you on this very beautiful Sabbath day. And today is a very special Sabbath day. If you didn't know, today is Creation Sabbath, which is one Sabbath every year, the fourth Sabbath in, in October, where the Adventist Church, the Adventist Church family right around the world celebrates God's creation. We explore what God has done out in nature, but we also dive into the Bible to learn how God created as well. And we stand amazed and awed by what God has, has done. And I'm really delighted to be here with you today. The reality is, though, that you might be going to high school and studying biology, and you might be really troubled, challenged by the curriculum, what, what is being taught. You read in the Bible that we were created in six days in, in the image of God. And yet the, the biology books and textbooks tell us that we evolved from ape-like animals. And it really challenges you. What, what should we believe? What, what, is, what is true? And then maybe you decide to, to go to university, the University of South Pacific, where you're thinking of studying biology or sociology or psychology. And your parents and your grandparents are a little bit worried about you because they know that when you go to university, you'll be, you'll be challenged, you'll be taught evolutionary theory. How can we move forward? Where, where can we find answers and reasons for what we believe? Not only what you learn in, in school and university, but also when you're talking to your friends, maybe your classmates, maybe teachers, maybe, maybe some young professionals or, or scientists. And they, they might challenge you. They, they might say, look, it's irrational to to believe the biblical account of creation. You know, there's all this evidence for evolution. But, but what about creation? Where, where's the evidence for creation? What, what's the basis on which we believe what the Bible teaches? Well, today I want to dive into this very important topic. And the topic is this, the logic of creation. Is there logical reasons why we can believe in creation? And the question that we're asking is, is a literal six-day creation illogical? Many people around the world actually do think it's irrational and illogical. And so we, we need to answer this question. If we are to believe it, we need to understand why. And I want to, to dive into this. I want to dive into the, the teachings in the Bible which would lay a foundation for our belief in creation. And as we dive into the Bible, I'd like to invite you to pray with me as we, as we head into this topic. Father in heaven, I just want to thank you so much that we can meet together on this beautiful Sabbath day, Creation Sabbath. But Father, we need your Holy Spirit. We need your Spirit to guide us. Jesus, you promised us that you would send the Helper, the Spirit of Truth, who would guide us into all truth. And that's what I want to pray for right now, that you would guide us, you would lead us, you would teach us what you want us to understand and to know. Is my prayer in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. The first teaching in the Bible that we need to understand is this, is that God is all-powerful. God has all the power in the world. He, his power is unlimited. About 2,000 years ago, in a little town called Nazareth, there was a young woman who was going about the house doing her chores, cleaning the house, doing the cooking, getting ready for 
uh, for her family to, to come home from work. And suddenly in the corner, there's this dazzling angel, Gabriel, who spoke to her and told her that she would conceive and bear the Son of God. Of course, Mary was, was a little bit troubled. She thought to herself, how is this possible? I'm, I'm not even married. And then Gabriel told her these beautiful words, for nothing will be impossible with God. Nothing will be impossible with God because God has unlimited power. He can perform supernatural miracles. He can literally bring things right out of, of nothing. A few millennia before, God also came with a couple of angels and spoke to Abraham and Sarah. And during the conversation, during the lunch that they had together, he told Abraham and Sarah that they were going to have a child, a promised child. And for them, they, they couldn't figure it out because Sarah was old. Abraham was old too. How can you have a child when you're old? And then God looked Abraham in the eye and he said, is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard for the Lord? God can perform supernatural miracles. He can bring things out of literally nothing. You know, C.S. Lewis wrote this in, in the book Miracles. If God miraculously creates a sperm in the body of a virgin, referring to Mary, it does not proceed to break any laws, natural laws or scientific laws. The laws at once take over. Nature is ready. Pregnancy follows according to all the normal laws. And nine months later, a child is born. Miracles are possible. God can perform them. The very famous um, scientist at Cambridge University, Sir George Stokes, who hold, held the chair that Isaac Newton held, said this, admit the existence of a God, of a personal God, and the possibility of a miracle follows at once. If the laws of nature are carried on in accordance with his will, he who willed them may will their suspension. What he's saying is God created the natural laws, the scientific laws. And if he created them, then he can also perform miracles, even if they do not follow those scientific laws. It's an amazing insight for us to be able to understand the power of God. Then the, the very famous Christian philosopher said this, indeed, there is nothing here to prevent God from miraculously parting the waters of the Red Sea or changing water into wine or bringing someone back to life. Or for that matter, creating ex nihilo out of nothing, a full grown horse in the middle of Times Square. It's perfectly possible for God to create ex nihilo, a full grown horse in the middle of Times Squares, without violating the principle of conservation of energy. God, when he performs miracles, is not violating the natural laws. He's simply working in a different way. The laws can work together with miracles. The second thing that we need to understand is that God is all knowing. He has all the knowledge in the world. He knows everything. In Psalm 147 verse 5, it says, As great is the Lord and abundant in power, his understanding is beyond measure, beyond measure. He knows everything. There's no limit to his understanding. And then Jesus told us that even the hairs of your head are all numbered. That is an incredible insight in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 30. And then in Isaiah, that beautiful book of prophecy, Isaiah wrote this, lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might. And because he is strong in power, not one is missing. God calls all of the stars by name and he brings them out by his power. I want to uh, explore this idea of the, the numbers of your head. Did you, did you realize that you have about 100,000 hairs on your head? That's a very, very big number. Now, if you were to try and count all the numbers of the hairs on your head, which is a bit challenging, they're, they're pretty small and thin, and you counted one hair every second, it would take you 27 hours and 47 minutes to count all those hairs. 
That's a, that's a pretty long time. It would take you all day and even beyond. Now think about this though. There's 7 billion people in the world. And so if you were to count all of the hairs on every person who lives in this world, it would take you 7 billion days and even, even more than that to count all of the hairs. But God knows all of your hairs, the numbers of your hairs right now. And if you lose one, he knows it immediately as well. That's how much God knows. Not only that, when we look at the stars, there are millions, there are billions, there are trillions of stars. There's uh, one sextillion stars. Look at all of those zeros on the screen. God knows all of them. He calls them by name. He brings them out. That's the knowledge of God. God knows how to create a world like our world. He can do it. He can do it miraculously as well. The other thing we need to remember as well is that God is morally perfect. In Psalm 18 verse 30, it says this, This God, His way is perfect. Everything God does is perfect. And in 1 John, the letter that John wrote uh, back in the first century, he wrote, This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. There's no imperfection in God. And so when God creates a world, he will create a perfect world where there's no pain or suffering or crying or sin or death. That's the way that God would create this world. And that's exactly what we read in the Bible in the book of Genesis. That God created and it was good. God created and it was very, very good. It was a perfect world that did not contain sin or suffering or pain or, or death. The other thing we need to understand is that God is intensely relational. Also in, in John's letter, he wrote, God is love. First John 4, 4 verse 8. One of the most amazing um, pictures of God, the most fundamental characteristic of God. God is love. Now, if God is love and he's relational, he would want to share with you, share with us how he created this world. And that is exactly what he did. About a few thousand years ago, God met the Hebrew slaves that he had freed from Egypt. He met them in the Arabian desert, the Mount Sinai. And on top of the mountain, he, he spoke to them in the midst of the lightning, in the midst of the thunder, in the earthquakes, and the, the mountain was quaking. He shared with them Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments. We find them in Exodus chapter 20. And right there in the middle, in the Fourth Commandment, which talks about the Sabbath, the Sabbath day that we're celebrating and remembering today, God told that one million Hebrew slaves, he said to them, For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. In the presence of a million people, he told them, I made heaven and earth, and I made them in six days. That's the reason why I blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Every week, when we gather together for Sabbath, we are reminding ourselves that God created this world in six days. You know, a professor, Gerhard, Gerhard von Rad, wrote this, The seven days of the creation week are unquestionably to be understood as actual days, and as a unique, unrepeatable lapse of time in the world. He was saying that we need to understand when we read the Bible, when we read Genesis 1, we are reading that God created this world in actual days, a, a unique period of time. That's his understanding. That's his study of the book of Genesis. Then if we go to another professor, Professor James Barr, who was at Oxford University, and then he went to America um, to teach there. He said this, in fact, the only natural exegesis or interpretation of Genesis is a literal one, in the sense that this is what the author meant. And then if we go to our own university um, in the States, Andrews University, there's um, Professor Richard Davidson, 
And he writes, based upon my personal study of the Genesis account of creation, Genesis 1 and 2, and later intertextual allusions to this account, I must join the host of scholars who affirm that Genesis 1 and 2 teach a literal material creation consisting, consisting of six literal 24-hour days. He's saying, I must join the others who interpret Genesis to teach a literal material creation week. That's Richard Davidson. You know, you might be saying that that's very great. We, we, we look at the theology, we look at the studies in the book of Genesis, but what about science? What does science tell us about creation? Is there any evidence that God created this world in six days, about 6,000 years ago? Well, the exciting fact is that there is evidence. And I want to share these with you right now. The first evidence is this. You might have been uh, walking down the, the road when you saw a, a car, much like the one you see on the screen, completely rusted over, just sitting there, going nowhere. And if you were to study that car and to, to analyze uh, the rust and the, the metal on that car, you would be able to, to work out how long that car had been sitting there, how long it had been rusting for. You could even uh, work out when it was, was made by, by studying the chemical properties of that car. You could learn a lot just by analyzing and, and learning a lot about the car. Now, the fact is this, is it's not only cars that are getting rusty and getting old. It's also you and I as well. We know that oh so well. And it's not only our individual bodies that are getting old, but it's also our genes. Deep inside every single one of the cells in our body is, is a molecule called DNA. And that holds the genes. It's the information which, which carries all of the, 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 the information that we need to, to build our, our bodies, to, to, that, that designs our bodies, that, that holds information for who we are. Now, the reality is this, every, every day, those genes are mutating. They're, 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 there's errors that are creeping into our DNA, into our genes. And every generation, uh, from your grandparents down to your parents, down to you, down to your children, uh, there's, there's an increased amount of, of mutations and, and errors as well. It's like our genes are rusting away. And if we take this back through history, if we, um, we look back, if we extrapolate back, if we look back into, the, um, into history itself, what we find is that the human genome or the human genetic material can only be about 6,000 years old. What that points us to is that it validates, it, it confirms the biblical account of, of creation. Incredible evidence that we find in and of ourselves. Now, it's not only in our bodies, in our genes, in our DNA, but it's also in our world as well. And this is one of the beautiful things that I love about our planet. Our planet is an incredible planet, planet Earth. And uh, there's, there's water, there, there's oxygen, there, there's, there's trees, uh, there, there's land. It's a beautiful place to live, as you would know well. But there's another thing that we, we need to understand, which we can't actually see, and that is around our Earth is a magnetic field. A magnetic field like those little magnets you might have played with it in, in school or, or Sabbath school where they, uh, they clamp together and you try and pull them apart or they push each other apart. Magnets are a lot of fun. But there's a, a magnetic field around our Earth that's caused by the by the currents of iron um, that, that are in the, um, in the earth itself, inside the planet. Now, what this does is, is that our magnetic field around our earth actually protects us. So the sun is, is a very, very hot star, and it is, it is blowing these solar winds, all of these, these particles and, and wind out into to space. 
And the thing is this is, uh, is if we didn't have our magnetic field, we would literally be fried by these solar winds. But God has created something very special, a magnetic field to protect us, to be like a force field and shield around us. But there's another thing that we need to understand about this magnetic field. And that is the, the strength of this magnetic field is actually decreasing in time. It's becoming weaker every century. So scientists have discovered that every century, about 5% of the strength of this magnetic field is decreasing. It's dropping by 5%. Now, if you extrapolate this back in through history, if you take this back in time, the, the strength when you go back in time would have been increasing. And once we reach about 10,000 years ago, the strength of the magnetic field would have, been, would have been so strong that it would have literally melted our Earth. So to, to have a planet where we could have water and trees and things like that, we could only go back about 6,000 years. So this is additional confirmation, um, scientific evidence for a recent creation, not only of us, but of our whole planet as well. So what we can say is this, a recent literal six day creation is logically sound. It makes sense. There's good theological reasons. There's good biblical reasons. There's also good scientific reasons. And I could only give you a couple of the, the really fascinating scientific reasons that, that I have found very, very interesting and compelling as well. But the question you might be asking is this, we, we've been talking about creation, we've been looking at the evidence, but what about evolution? You know, isn't there a whole lot of evidence that, that, that we evolved? Isn't there evidence that, that animals have evolved? Well, let's, let's dive into that together today. What about evolution? You know, on the screen, you can see a, a picture of some really beautiful uh, dogs. I don't know if you have dogs yourself or, or whether you have dogs nearby, but dogs are very, they're very friendly creatures. They always want to come up and play and, and say hello to, to you. But the fact is that the dogs that we see on the screen, they're not the only dogs in existence. They're, there's much bigger dogs uh, like Doberman. You have German Shepherds, you have really small dogs, uh, the Dutch Hound dogs, and, and there's a whole variety where did all of these dogs come from? And if you go back in, in history, what you find is that those dogs all went back to a common ancestor. There was a, an original dog. Not only that, scientists uh, spend a lot of time in laboratories and they will be uh, exploring, doing experiments on bacteria. So they have a little dish uh, and they will um, put in culture and they will see how the bacteria multiplies and, and uh, reproduce. And what they find is the bacteria over time will change. They will mutate. They'll become a different bacteria. Now, this is very familiar to us right at the moment because, as you would be well aware, we have been faced with COVID-19. COVID-19. Now, if you're listening to the news, what you will discover is that the COVID-19 virus has changed over time. Originally, there was the Alpha variant, then there was the Gamma variant, the Beta variant, and now we are faced with the big challenge of the Delta variant. But that's not the only variant. There's further, there's Mu and Lambda. There's a whole lot of variety of, of COVID-19 viruses. And it makes you stop and think. If those are changing and, and, and evolving, does that mean that we evolved, that we have a common um, ancestor together with chimpanzees and apes as well. Well, let's dive into this question, this challenge together. I want to introduce you to Professor James Tua. Now, Professor James Tua is a very fascinating person. He has a really fun and interesting job. He is a molecular engineer. He's a molecular scientist. And what he does is he builds little machines out of molecules. Here's one of the machines that he has built. It's a molecular car, so he can drive it like a, um, a, a remote control car or, or a four-wheel drive. He can drive around 
and, and as you can see the the wheels are made out of molecules the uh, the axle it's a very fun little car that we couldn't even even see very very interesting but the interesting thing is this is that James Tura knows how to build very very small things let's go to something much more bigger that we may be more familiar with a a car and on the screen we have a, a car which has been taken to pieces and all laid out all the different pieces in a car it's a fascinating picture you go around and you look at all trying to identify the pieces you know I've always wanted to say I'd love to take a car to, to pieces not a very expensive car but a, a really interesting car now the interesting thing is this is that I want to challenge you to put that car back together again that's a very very challenging um, task it's a very challenging job because it's very likely that you will miss out some pieces you'll end up with a piece or a screw or a nut and you think to yourself what where can I where can I put this where, where should this go maybe the car wouldn't even work and this is Professor James whole point that the complicated things like cars are difficult to put together very very difficult to put together in fact this is one of the big challenges for science how do you put together a living cell our bodies are made up of of many 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 cells the central biological question of the 21st century is how does a viable cell emerge from the bewilderingly combinatorial complexity of its molecular components you know in the cell there's all these interactions between proteins and and um, molecules and scientists have recognized that there's about um, 10 to the power 79 billion interactions between proteins they, uh, they're, they're combining they're, they're disconnecting they're, they're bumping into each other this is an incredible number of interactions um, within the cell now scientists have also recognized that there's only about 10 to the power 90 particles in the universe this means that there's so many chances of things happening in the cell which way beyond even the particles in the universe I want to share this picture of a of a, um, a cell with you it's a little model like a kid's toy and you can see on the edge that uh, we have a, a cell wall that's the orange um, skin on the ball and that's what protects the cell that's what keeps it all together then the white foam is the cytoplasm this is like the the fluid that fills the cell and keeps it all in place right at the center of the cell we have a nucleus that's kind of like the library it's kind of like the the information center like the hard disk of your cell with all of DNA that you need to uh, for the information to to build who you are then up the top there's a mitochondria that that blue shaped um, carrot like shaped um, object that's a powerhouse for the cell and then what we find is that the uh, all of this together is a cell now scientists have realized that cells are incredibly complex they're almost like a whole city to um, uh, which describes um, who they are and what they what they're like and, you know the 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 cell is is um, what builds is your building block for who you are how do we get the cell well professor james to us says this is that thinking that a cell could come together randomly is like this thinking that cells could be produced through random interaction between molecules is like buying four kilograms of sliced chicken meat adding two liters of chicken broth warming it sticking in a few feathers and suggesting a live chicken will eventually come clucking out if given enough time or that a proto chicken has been made it's just it doesn't make sense you know you could be sitting there stirring that chicken stew stew for for days for weeks you will never get a chicken coming out of that stew and the same thing is with cells you will not get a living cell just by random interactions of proteins of molecules that's just too complex the other thing that we need to to think about as well is DNA I was talking to you about this before but DNA is the beautiful molecule in which the information for life is stored everything about you the color of your eyes the the color of your hair how tall you are how big your nose is 
uh, is all stored on your DNA. And you know, DNA is like computer code. It's like software. Professor Richard Dawkins at Oxford University wrote this. After Watson and Crick, the people who discovered DNA, we know that genes themselves within their minute internal structure are long strings of pure digital information. The machine code of the genes is uncannily computer-like. It's, it's like software. Not only Richard Dawkins, but also Bill Gates, who, who was the CEO of Microsoft. He wrote this, DNA is like a computer code, but far, far more advanced than any software we've created. Now, the point is this, every piece of software that you and I have ever seen or used has been created by a software programmer, a, a computer scientist, an IT specialist, by an intelligent person. And what this means is that the DNA information that we have in every single one of our cells points to an intelligent designer, points to God himself. Not only this, there is a beautiful process by which every single one of us are here today. One point in time, somebody, two people fell in love and they came together in a beautiful process called sexual, sexual reproduction. And nine months later, a beautiful baby was born. That's you. That's I. Now the challenge is this, how do two different people, a man and a woman, a male and a female, develop so that when they come together, they can produce a baby? That's a big challenge. And scientists and evolutionists do not have an answer for that. It's, it, it does not make sense. In, <clears throat> in fact, Professor Richard Dawkins says there are many theories of why sex exists, and none of them is knocked down convincing. There is no good explanation. There's no good theory for sexual reproduction. And that's a big problem because every single one of us are here today because of the process that God set in place. A beautiful process where people could fall in love and, and enjoy intimacy. And yet science cannot explain it. And most likely never will be able to explain it. There's another thing that I want to explore with you today as well, and that is your mind. You've been sitting here today listening to me, analyzing what I've said, thinking about it. Is it logical? Does it make sense? You have been using your mind. Now, Charles Darwin himself had this incredible doubt. He says, but then with me, the horrid doubt always rises with the, whether the convictions of man's mind, which has been developed from the mind of the lower animals are of any value or, or at all trustworthy. Would anyone trust in the convictions of a monkey's mind? If there are any convictions in such a mind, what he's saying is, would you trust a monkey? Would you ask a monkey what to do with your money or where you should go to university or who you should marry? No, you wouldn't because you don't trust monkeys. So why would we trust ourselves if we evolve from monkeys? We shouldn't. And this is what uh, Professor Alvin de Planting says as well. Evolution gives one a reason to doubt that the human mind can produce true beliefs. C.S. Lewis wrote this, unless human reasoning is valid, no science can be true. So the very fact that you are able to think, that you have a rational mind, that you're able to analyze science, you're able to analyze what I'm saying and to think through these things is actually evidence that God created your mind. Your mind and science is evidence that God created us in his image. You know, the reality, friends, brothers and sisters, is that it is creation that is logical. It is evolution that is irrational and doesn't make sense. And I want to just invite you to put your faith in the Bible, to trust in a God who has the power to create this world in six literal days and to, to create you in his image as well. Let's pray as we consider 
this amazing opportunity. Father in heaven, I just want to thank you for this amazing opportunity, creation Sabbath, to explore your creation, to be awed by what you have created. Lord, sometimes we are challenged. We are challenged by whether you could have created this world in six days. We're challenged by, by miracles. But Father, I want to pray that you would just give us a deep sense of confidence and peace and understanding that we can trust you, that you created just as you taught us in Genesis and in the Ten Commandments as well. Father, I just want to thank you and may you fill our hearts and minds with your creative Holy Spirit that we may be transformed into your image is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you ever thought about what our world would be like without light? Or what force keeps the moon in its orbit? Vibrant colors, fragrant flowers, flying birds, spider webs, sparkling stars, beehive construction, the human body with all its functions are just a few of the magnificent phenomena pervading nature. Could all this have come about without a plan? At first, there was nothing. Darkness covered the face of the deep. Thundering through the universe, God's voice commands, Let there be light. Through His word, the world was created. Light. Atmosphere. Vegetation. Sun and moon marine and terrestrial animals, and finally, us. Each day's work was good. Together they were very good. A world in perfect balance, where everything existing in nature expressed harmony, beauty, precision and adaptation, each testifying to a brilliant plan. After completing six magnificent days of work, God rested. Rest on the seventh day demonstrates God's love for those He created. Time is the Creator's gift to reconnect with Him and enjoy His grace. Creation Sabbath. Made for you. Autor Talatin Gongome. Pembulan ini begini kemni, na turangan merama, na darubu ke kemni nangon elawa, osi begini kemni lalai. Kau ni siapa tu kumai? Na patapatan ni pengkara bungo, na singa lebu, ni singa ni pada dengu, ni kuah. Aku kira ni dah marutati kurang nona be pembulan ini nak kelu, na nona lolloma. Kau osi be, na nona potai kena satu kau nampul lebu, na satu kena satu kau na ngau na sarang ngau. Kau sa kinta bagi kami tiga ini lama ni turang, ni rawan suliti untuk bulu nak kena ngalala. Kita kianda, bagai itu dua sar. Enam ibu nuat apa bagai itu saya mesti kumik kina. Merawan ni, tapi orang mudin doh muka ibu tak itu kau enak tali, kena di nanti mohon seni kelu. Kau bagai nui nui, ni rawan inda sulia walnga apa lelai lelai kena ngau nunggu. Kita buat anak nona elo tampu, benda bagai tuntel linga, kena nona bosa. Merau ni bukik kina, nanon tatiku bawa bawa, ni tahu arah sakit tatiku, nanon lepas tel main nanon taturang. Na siang tamu ni kuah ibu ibu tu doko, ena lotu, era bangun nunis sakit tatiku kina se, ena mai bangun nunis sakit tatiku kina, ena talai ni nanon bayi mbuli nanon tak kelu, na kena dina, kena bayi ka era tu senaga kibik kena, kena dona ka ena dona menda bangun nunis kina. Ni bika kita ngai rambuli tunggu era bukan dinding dinding tu. Ni dua sahaja tiko nak kelu, kelu buku, kelu ngangga, kelu kawa, kambuli yang nabi kaki tengah. Entah sahaja bukan nunis sahaja tengah, menda kila sahaja tiko, kan tak aku ini mulai lah bukan siang dinding tengah entah lewa. Ni coba buku berhura, nak kaki tengah satu kina, awil sahaja kina, oi kenda, nata mata tamu sahaja ni. Oh ya, ni tuku tuku lebu era bukan nunis sahaja tiko kina. Na turangan nama ramu dorbu kena kau nelayu, ena bi boleh lute ena bi saya buru bura, ena singa tampu saya kongko. Ia okelah ni induin induin ena bi kaya bagai dorbu tiu ena bi boleh lutu. Kau sana itu takkan ni 
Ina rani buka ikan dana kelu, ena nonton bing gravi. Kau sih bina bibu noni sih amat ikut mekina, ena singa tamu ni kuah. Ya, aku bina kata meu, mana kau tikan tak kena tuan awas ni bola, kila ilu, ena ni bola ni sami ni tv, tapi ena sami tulis singa bulu kapa. Ena bina kana tikin, ena bina tanu lagi ni kuah kana lega lega sar. Kau ni takkan ni rani dana buka tunda lima, me ena bos buka ikan dana kelu, ena singa ilu bungo. Aku kerja ikan. Kerawal ngan, ilu lalu tahun lalu tambah pun matanda, mungkin dona masuk. Turangan ni mami kelu, kima mungkin ribu kemun Italia na single lebungko. Ni alam nak ni mami kelu, ni bos mami kibe kimi. Ni baga buli di kimi, tu biru kimi. Merau ni kimi, baga bulan bulan tak nak kelu ni mami bawa kani. Fengkara biki kimi, ni kima muara kesakit di guna nomuni leh style mai. Ni bukai sah guna nomuni tema tema lalu lalu mungko, musung keleng kelawa. Me indi wanda usah kanga ni lama muni ana single level ni kuah muni rokobi kan tu kain tu anda ngaki nana kelu anggo nama su ni pak taki kiri pak bunyi benak sengan ada tani atas sengan lebih muni kuci su nani mami soro kani mami bawa mula topol ya talemanda oya na ulu tanga topol ya talemanda ada apa mendo topol ya topol ya nampu tanai bal bal dah Tobolea na muri chisu tali. Tobolea na weisau ni mbulu bukai alu. Se, mbulu tunga baka burubura. Na ibola tambu e mbulu ikenda e na samen kena wasi tulus nga bulu kapa. Oya e na tikina e walu e kabi ikenda. Ndo tobolea tali manda. Ndo tobolea tali manda. Karaida ni sa yalu binaka kochoba. Sa kalu ngata na tamata sa bakara rabi buah. Endua nanti kini bola tambu endau way way save tak kibag libu. So era willing musu taka kata bunga ketaka. Oh taste and see that the Lord is good. Ekane bola tambu pertanya. Etali tu kubiau nikah nak kene keruni dengu era. Blessed is the man who trust in him. Sakalung ata nata mata sabar rai buaya. Untuk buat taronga nata rongo siapa apa emai kai kina. Ena tiki na walu, nandao ni saa mwote wita, menda tobolea talemanda. Tobolea talemanda. Karaitha. Siyanga ni tobolea talemanda, kakila. Siyanga ni tobolea talemanda, ka mwile dawa. Siyanga ni tobolea talemanda, alaku ngaya na nomu ngonsal. Etu kuna pangangu nandao ni saa mi. Tobolea, karaitha, ni saa ya lupinaka kochioba. Ndo ni tukutukulewe wete kukina. Kalau ni tak, kan? Ibu tanya tiki, nanti 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 singgih lebih ni kuat. Enak rawa ni bukik kenda, menda topolea, taliman. Enak nona bola bola, Ellen White. Enak dua, nana nona bola bola, nana marina, nana Johnny Peppa. Ibu tu semua bukan ni bosot ya, ni nuna Willie kesal tiga ni bosot pertanya. Kau bukan anggo ne. How shall we know for ourselves God's goodness and His love? The psalmist tell us. Not hear and know, read and know, or believe and know, but taste and see that the Lord is good. Instead of relying upon the word of another, taste for yourself. Turang kena merama. Ebe bagana numi tigo na yalu provisai na nona bolo bolo na merama wanda. Nikabe kenda. Kaku ni bagara rabi na kaur ngoda. Kaku ni bagara rabi na ka erna numa iso na tomata. Kaku ni bagara rabi, ena nona bosa tali ndua. E ka bango biki anda, mo baga nui nui, ka bagara rabi, ena bosa ni kelu. Merawa, merawa, beiko, buka tamata ndua, mo bakila na tali ni nga rabi kelu. Turang kena merama. Na kita patah bani lawa lakongko, ena siki ni sobi bapa nua, na nonton bula tau mundu. E siki ni maisoli, bakalasi, si, Oira ngana turanga, ena soli, na beira na mbulu tamundu. E sini soli beira na butu niyawu. E soli baka tamata ya ndua. E sini mai soli baka ikumkumu. E sini mai soli baka isungusungulotu, matalotu bata. Sayanga, e mai soli baka tamata ya ndua. Saaro te mekana ntau nisame, topo lea manta kakila. Mepaka ya katiku bikenda, na tiki ni tulus nga bulkoa. Na tiki na walu ya, nisame tulus nga bulkoa. Topo lea tale manta kareitha, nisaya lo minaka. Kocioba, sakalu ngata. Nata mata. Yang tu dua. Kali bikin tadi bola tambah pertanyaan. Kapan go? Blessed is 
Vamena. Yang ada lirik ni boleh tahu apa? Apa lagi? A single singular tu guna bolong bolong. The man M A N singular. Esok ni man M E N. Mesol itu kena tu ni kum kumu. Kena membalas satu guna begian dah. Mana nombi begian dah? Turangan kena merama. Ni tu boleh aman dan kalau eh kan itu mata yang dua. Kan itu mata yang dua. Kena membalas satu tu ni kena begian dah. Men dah 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 tik dah tik tu buat mata yang dua. Anda nonton bulu tamu. Turun kan merama terbuk kan guna lelau. Sini bukan tahu berita tanah nombor bulu tamu tu. Nandai, tundai, winak, tumbu. Di nombor bulu bagai alu. Ina bukan tahu tak gitu. Ina nombor zak zak tak gitu. Bukan teman tanah dua. Me winak na nombor bulu kani. Buat tak kena kalau. Saya melihat wasit tulis nombor bapa net kena bapa. Aku pernah kata mengurai tawal ngai ruan yang alalil lebu. Ni zaman aku punya kaki na nanti aku ni saya mau tewi ta. Tahu boleh aman tanah kalungu. Na sami wasi tulis kulo ba era kaiso ongona no na sami ni mara unga na ndau ni sami oti bita metu sanaka na bua si na ka e rawata e na no na bukan daitak na no na bukan nui nui bukan rabi ko ti buana kalu sa bukan nui nui bukan rabi bukan bau tana kalu sangke mei buam balean ni no na maruta ka sangke bina ka ti mei ka bika na ti kene walu to bole amanda ya na sigile bini ko au ka ti ko ani to bole ata le manda Boleh tu, kena kena entah bagai orang tu kau mengko, entah salut tu tu kau Kristo, entah sehari hari tu boleh kau ti, hari hari entah tu bagai tu tu boleh. Ya sebelum ni kuah, aku bina kata, mau tu boleh tak lemanda, iya mau bagai ni tak. Karena tu, sampai tulis aku lupa, entah kena apa, aku endu angan aku na, entah nari tengah airua, entah sebelum ni kuah, kau kena apa angko, entah kena apa. Awa baka sangka rai coba, kasa rongo di yau, kasa baka mula yau, maina nunggu rere kena. Bukan total. Awa baka sangka rai coba, kasa rongo di yau, kasa baka mula yau, maina nunggu rere kena. Eta lebi yau na ibola tambu buat pertanya. Ni bos sot yau, ni nabi lihat telinga bikin dah. Naka itu kuna na ibola tambu buat pertanya. Kau bangko, I sought the Lord and He heard me. And delivered me from all my fears. Satu rau, esen awal ngan di bawah mulai aw, esen reki aw. Delivered me, kenapa lain tu nai besu itu ku, ebi suki itu ku nai tupa ni nunggu bawa nanan, ni usah rere boli, nai luma, na tangga ya, ni upah kesan kerana nak kalu, gay tu ni bangku, gay besi reki nak kalu, ebi bawah mulai nak kalu. Tu orang kena merama, saru tu mereka kira nanti awal nisami, ada tiga nai walu. Oh, taste and see. That the Lord is a deliverer. To bole manda nakalo enda ube sereki. To bole manda nakalo enda ube bakumlay. Oya na be sureti. Oya na buna ube akati ukin ang singlebu ni kuha. Menda to bole a talemanda nakalo enda ube bakumlay ngo. Ikilan na dapat e kani tiga bu ni wasi tulus ni tiga na ibaw ya ni wasi ni katulus ng bulgo pa ni sami ngo. Karena tiga ni bah, aw aw baka sangka rai coba. Kila turang akhir merama, taruh bukan kau nelayan. Erai rai sana puna, esangan indo bui baka mula ikin anak kelu, balat indo siang ni baka sangka rai kuai. Leu punet tiga ni bola tampu. E alat tak kini anak kelu, indo baka sangka karmai, indo masumai, aw na rongo di kimi do. Leu putar ngan tiga ni bola tampu kapi kenda, baka sangka anak kelu ni sih kuner awa. Kena mana balik? Nanon tak boleh boleh okenda. Lotu pak Kristo, bagaimana bau tu nak keluar? Ni bukan engkau nak entah siapa ni dua bangkang kar. Aku sampai nak kata pun boleh kenda. Bagi sengkara, talemanda. To boleh, talemanda. Aisy anak kena wajib pas kalau betul lu. Anak tiga ni dua, rumah tak kaya kaki kenda nafosa. Ia engko sanggai bakar ko coba ko kue kakadibiko, cekope, kambuliko, Israeli, kakua ni korere. Niu a buli iko, au a kadibi iko ena damu, kosa nongo. Kendo e pagar rongo tiko mai ni kuwa, ere ere tangga ya tiko, ere 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 tiko, tiko na eluma, au bina kata mau kai ni kuwa, mau bina kandi taki, ni kalau ekila iko, ekila na damu, onona na kalau, balat ni ambuli iko, sa buli iko oti na kalau, mai nanti lah nak kau kalibari, senga ena kau la sen seliba, sena ilabo, senga ena pika eda dawale. Enam nonan ratali. Bagaimana tak? Boleh nabi sengaja buat nembak. 
e bolikino bi e e rongukino na bosongo bi na israeli ni sembera ni mai lili ba komando atake na turanga en andelana ko kalwar sakara bi au abuliko we kenda nda ba rongu ni kuwa enda sara ileso enda sara ida kanta kila ni sama te oitu chisu en andelana me kalwar nai boli wo sibi ndondo e ron bolikino ndo na tamata o ya mesuli na non bula en abuku na talendo Ya nabu na ubina kata meuka kini weekend ka toka ruta kana kai tukuna na kalau ver na Israel ka kone rere ka kone ni kore rere rongo na kai kana cerme wase wase ngabul ka rua na tiki ni tirgan dua do ka kone rere baka na tui papiloni ko koe ndo sa rere baka tiko do ka kone rere baka koya sa ka ko choba niu sa tiko bata ki kem do meu baka mbulai kem do ia meu kalira ki kem do maina lingana rongo na kem na turanga na maram Wala wala tiga na kalungo na nona bos tiga na bos tiga na bir na isire ler tuba ka bombulo mo ipapiloni. Sa ka ipinaka tebe ka bir do ka kunda raba ka na tui papiloni ko bisuki ke mo niti ngori. Ni ka kunda raba kwa do ka kunda raba ka tiko do ka kunda raba ke koya sa ka ko tsioba. E ka ba ngoko na nona biba ka nite ka bir ni usa tiko ba ta ke ke mudo. Meu ba ka mbula i ke mudo. Ia meu kali ra ke ke mudo maina lingana. Ena ndela ni biba kambo mbulo taki ena nonra muri lewatu mbalete ni ndua elewa yirtu sanga ibina kata me kamena kelo ndoka kunda rebe kwa ndoka kunda rebe kwa ena adona nga ono nsire ki kemdo ono kali raki kemdo tani mwana lingana turaka na maram si adapa na ibesu nte besu tiku ni kuwa na tamanta na 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 tamanta na kelo lebu mai loma langi ibina kata me kabe kenda ndaka kunda re beta ko ran sire ki kenda mani ibesu daba nga nte besu ki tiku kina sarutu me kanda ni same ndo utobole ata lemanta Do to bolik oh taste and see that the lord is good mulet na daba ni pa kilana ndo ni samu te vita en e besu daba nga wa besu ki kine ndo nga una sa rao bua na kalungo mesere kiao mai dino ken wa sitini tikin ro sabul ka walu ka bango na ken rong ie ka ko ni re ba kira er sa ba ka matena yango ara sa sing ni roata me ra ba ka matena yalo ie ndo re re ba ki kwanga sa roata me ba ka rosana yalo Kena yang hotel nga mai eli. Aw santo rumah tuh boleh bunyi bunga rendu kaya. Tapi orang bangun tuh kena tempat. Kau nerbang ke tempat. Nerbang anak kelu. Yang anak kelu ibu kat tuh ni kuah. Kau nerbang ke tempat. Nerbang ke kuah. Menda nerbang anak kelu. Na tempat ibu kerusangan na yang musim ibu kerusangan ya lo. Kena malam malam ko. Ni usah nerbang tuh tuh na tempat ibu 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 kari riti ko. Si ibu kau tuh tuh na nomu mula. Kau nerbang kuah. Sulia na elomu bua na turanga, mulai tana turanga na rani pambula na elomu. Dia ngani pake rusana tama tana yang ngomu. Ia rere baki na, ninta siaga ni rere baka na kelu, o koya esa rau mi baka mati ana yangu, e rau tala ngami pake rusana yalu. Ngo sa itu utuk liu, kena malam bale ngo. E ndina tiku na kaitu kuna ntoni saime na saime tulus kubu kubu na tikne walu. O taste and see, tobo lea tala mata. Tobo lea tala mata na ngarabi kelu. Mi bina kadaki. Tobo lea tala manta na nomun robi ukani. Mi uo sibi. Tobo lea tala manta na nomun robi kilai. Mendei. Baka bina kataka. Kesa lulunga. Kilai koe baka bina kataka. Taure koe mendei. Aisha wase wase ngurun dua. Kine walu. Ia koe koe shirele na nungu tamata. Koe koe cheko pe kausa handing taka. Na kawo ye parama nawe kangu. Ia koe yiko kawa kota maina yala yala ke wura wura. Kakadi baka mai. Na sau kana. Kasa kabe iko sai iko na nungu tamata ka usa ndingi ta kiko ka senga ni mbitiko talitu ke biwa no bakasa mungo ke mbiwa turan ke mbiwa na ka lo we biwa na kata mbiwa ka biwa ka ndita kitu biwa ka ndata poin tere riba ka tiko ke bakasa ndingi ta kiko ndana ka lo ke baka o baka rongo tiko ni kua o sa baka tiko tiko na nona singa tambu na ka lo se o sa ndingi ta ka tiko mo na baka ndita ka na nungu Bukan tetamu, bukan dizengu, nak nona singa ni bukan dizengu nak kelu. Aku bina kata muka aku, gori nak nona bending taki nak kelu, kira nona mumbul. Bukan dia tak, bukan dia tak nak nona mending ding. Saya betul semua bapa, ini tak kena lima, tak habis kena, ni kena kuri. Era sata taki, gori keru ni pakai sama. Era sata taki, kara sa bagarara mentaki, kasa singa ni mandua nama tanra. Turang kira mana? Matai, entah sahaja itu. Matai ni kaya kaki nana, dah ni saya mau tewita, menda kah, menda. Tobolat elemen tanah kelunggu, ambil tinjau ni sahaja kilatiku. 
ninga unenda urere kina ninga unenda welu makina ninga unenda utanga ya kina ninga unenda uyalo lele kina endunga e kautatani na nona yalo lele na nona elu na nona tanga ya nga enda ubi bakumbula e mai na nona rere kina nga oyana kelu yendo talani ya royalo e wosi bidaki e na rawo ni mbule kina sare na nga unenda sambula kina go e nga mi kana tikina lima era sata da ke boa go sai kum kum natural era sata da ke boa kara sa bakara ramataki ka sa singe ni mandua na matanda tali tiwe ne bola tambo pertania o bin kata me wili kata ni bikenda they looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed ni rere ni boa tu kuni bango ni ranga isero era singe walanga ni bakara ramataki satu rau mera mi dile birma in dona ram e tu ni bango ni o ira talanga era sara rama mai ke na mbale era sate ku me sero takamai e dona rama e na buku ni non ratadaki ande ke labina ni talon ni mosesi e na non ngan e na ngona rua sote kina kina kelu tu ni bango ni ngona sali sumiki na sase ro tu mena matana Seron matan, ada pesan gaya tu, pesan gaya lakukan orang kasir, pesan gaya pupul utek iku ya, mian umbi ada nona rara membeli tenir sasi dengan rawan rida rawan nata mata, nai serau, ni kalau usah aku tebul mau moses, gua mepi bangat di tega ulang abik ya, dan nakai tunai tunai dan sami, oh ira era tau tata ke buana kelau, era pagar rida nak kelau, era toroya ni buana kelau, era nanda u pagar rara mataki, seng walangan ni rapa kanto, ni nanda u pagar rara mataki, era sasi serau tala ngamai, mepi kata ke moses ya. Ni rasa seru tak kemain, nai seru ni kelu, er sah bukan ramat lagi kena. Kau itu nampak orang kena kuri, kah sah seni ni mandua nama tanda. Kau sah tuan apa kah sama bimbi kibe kenda. Dora kah endo bimbi mandua tengok ni balbal dah. Anak pun rawa pun ni kini kau bimbi kaya tama meni bimbi kaya tu. Ni rasa rey dengan non rilu bawa le, rau sah mandua, rau sah gay puni. Itu rangkai merama, ikabe kaya tanda tikin go. Ninda pagar rara mataki, ena rara meni kelu, ena nona iserau nak kelu, ena nona wos nak kelu, ena nona mbula nak kelu, ena nasi seni mandu atak endo nak, boleh tak? Na rara ma, esengan indo bi bawa mandu atak. Abang nak kata mentera ini dengan bi dengan tikina, karena saya ini rosak berlima, ena tikina itu lu, ena esengan talenga endua na waraki kemuni memandu akina. Ko iranga era talain rendre walenga era namandua. Aunu ita kan indana dingoma na bos ni kelu ni kuwa. Itali itu kibu ni bola tambo ya pertanian ni bos otiau ni sananda ulai sutiu kan ni bola tambo ya pertanian belta ni tali itu kibu. Nama tata ni bika ya bola ibu pertanian. Sama rosak bulu lima. Nanti kene to le kabango. Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. Satu ra. Mereka kau ni dua ewar lagi ke mana tigo? Mereka akan mandu atak. Sangat kan kini kuri. Let those be ashamed who deal treacherously without cause. Kata tigo bangun nanti kena ni bolta mau bit kau iranga erat lain rende walnga. Mereka akan mandu atak. Mereka akan mandu. Mereka usah kau ti. Nampak sedih kalau nara rama. Sambil donan rau, tinggi tua, don rokelim anu muni bosa. Sa, di mana kita bangun kerana ramah kita nongsal. Nyuwili kita nona bos, saya pernah ramah takkan nombi laku laku. Itu kena biar kita nombul nombul kita. Nyuwili kita nona bos, saya pernah ni kita cisu nona bos. Oh, sana rey di cisu. Enak pernah ramah tak kiko. Karena pernah ramah takkan nombi laku laku. Karena sekarang ni mandua kita. Saya pernah kabi kita nana sami tulis buku bahan itu kena lima. Saya pernah kabi kita nana sami rosu buku lima. Enak kena tulu. Ko ira era talain rende era nana mandua. Dona singa ni bi mandu ataki lebu sabo le katiku mai. Oya na nona lesu mai natural. Lebu era era bagai suri ni lotu ni kuwa. Era ndau buno ni kuwa me bagai takiku e buno tiku ni ngo. Era kan era sa lotu era bagai tutu era lotu. Era nang kai lakoi era nang kai turanga 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 nang kai kame bi era turanga. Dona lakota ni oki mendo sando kita kan ibal balda. Ata pun ibal balda. Ata lain dendre en sa wili katiku ngo. Ena sa merosul kelima ni tiki detolu. Kalau balik balik, saya kena ngunggu. 
menda vakelia ninda sarongoda na bosa ndine ni bosa ni kalobe bakai kana matata me bakai na matata ni kai tukura bikenda na bosa ke bakai sakai bikenda ni sasini bode de ni kuwa menda tali rau rau kina ke bakai sakai bikenda na kalou ni sawasi ya oti na kalou na kaka na tau sawasi bakai na kaka na tukun tukali aka koe berto meno araida witu na kasa bosa ba ruanga na kata sawasi bosa ba e wasi wasi tiku na kalou me wasi na kasa bosa ba me wasi na kata sawasi bosa ba Me tuku na bikenda na ito bo ibinaka, me tuku na bikenda na ka, esek na ibinaka. Me tuku na bikenda, turang kena marama, dau na numa, na numa, na numa. Menta na numa, ni bai bang na numi tiku na kalu. Ia ni nda saa seng na bia muria, enda saa talin nende, kilan lau. Ke bakau sin se mandua hati kung go, warak ni onang ke mandua, ena mati ni kalu. Saro te meka koe, ke bakau ndo saa mandua hati ke au ena mantan rata mata, au na bakau mandua hati ke mdo, ena mata ite mang. Aisi a ono sunga bulu, tiki na indua, kei na rua, mo tu ta ke mai, mo rara ma mai, ni sa ya do mai na nom rara ma, ia na sia roi tsio ba sa than ra mai beko, ia rei dan na mbutu mbuto e na umbi wuro wura, kei na mbutu mbuto lolo a na bai mata ni tu, ia e na than ra mai beko, ko tsio ba, kei na nono sia rau, e na rei di ni sa di la beko, tu ra kei na marama kila, ni sa mbula na kelo e lomanda. Ni sambulan nak keluar, entah samurian atau nombor sokan tak telera orang kina. Enak kila aku buru-buru, nak noni share orang. Kebakaran mana? Era, era, era entah utah tiko, era nak kila ngah, nabi sah. Mbelah tu ni sah. Tak tak nak keluar, en lemam. Tiga ni tolong, kekan kini kuri. Ia nabi mati ni tu tani, era nak laku boli, era nombor rama. Ke ira nak tui, era nak share orang ni kemu itu dah dah. Tak tak kerai boli. Ko ira ke de, era sah songkoh ni bata. Era sa laku mai weiko, alu be mu tangane, era na laku baka yau mai ke era na lu be mu lewa, era na ronggo ti mai turang kena marama, au sabi na kata mu kawi kenta ni kua, e kaba anggo indua na turanga, e anggi rimai na bitana mada sawiti, e na nono baka lewa mai, na lutu, a bing kara bisa kati wani ngo e na stisi ni kakambur raki ngo, kakwe, a ndo kati ngo ndo kati ngo ndo wunu tango ia, na lutu ni kabitu era sini tal tungami wali besu. Okey, ya, entar buat mana? Siapa yang dah nampak bata konggore? Balik tak? Ni bukan tiada tiada taki, baka fika, statistics, ekilah tu, ni korang tarangan lalu tu kebetulan orang sini itu nampak lebih susu. Ya, ubi nak kata muka apa kian tak? Oya, nanti nanti ni tempat tanya dua. E sini lengan lalu tu, lengan tempat tanya nanti tak? Nak kaya nanti tak? Ya, nak kau buat mana kian engko? Ni kalau ending kita ke Indonesia kumukumu, mungkin orang ending tak kerana Israel, Israel, mereka rara mah, mereka mata ni tu, dui dui, mereka mata ni tu wasibi, mereka uluna, rasa ni buina, mereka mereka mata membeti pakai turang, mereka orang ni rara mah ya ni, na rasa na mereka orang ni serau ni kibur kibur, na serau ni kalau kibir na bayi mata ni tu kita, bekerja na lutu pakai Kristus ni kuah. Kain dona kain tu kan Omar Mahar Magandi. Enam dona non normal ni bos. Saya kata bangko, if only Christians can live like Christ, for one day, the whole of India will turn into Christianity. Ya kan rau? Ni le ber claim tak ketungan ayat bangko. Ia salut tu pakai Kristus. Enam orang boleh beri telati. Dua, ers intali rau rau. Kita bos kita ni kelu. Ers ini muria kita ni non ibu nau. Turang kan merama. Pai talia, kau yang bikin tau cemas. Kau pakai usaha dalam mana ngai nandua. Usaha aku kat ini usaha dalam tau doku. Enam bulan aku nikelu. Sama, dua orang rau tin keruah. Enam tiga neba. Sahdan orang rara mai nampu tumpu tau beir nello nandono. Sahanda ulama suli kau kaya, kaya lo lama. Kanda udah kanda nandono. Endua nabe isau enak kau tamai nara rara ma. Ni sahdan raya nak kena malu nampu tumpu tau beir nello nandono. Oya na buna, sanding kita kikian tak kina nak keluar, mereka bikin dah, oikem undo, una rarama kiburbur. Mereka pergi rarama tak kiburbur, mereka tak kiburbur, mereka kila na rarama, karabai sau kina mula baklu. Asal ni tak, ni rarama ni boleh ni lemah dah. Menda sanding tak, menda bagai dah nak keluar. Boleh tak tak? Boleh tak ni serau ni keluar, ena serau ni kian dah, ka santai ada menda serau telinga. Wei ir na tamata mi bakai kati una same ena kena wasi tolu sunga bulu ka ba ka me kaku ni ndua e mandua se nga walanga ni kua mandua talanga ena singa binaka ena listu talmi kina na nonda tura 
Sami tulis ulu wain itu kini ono, kana kena rongo. Sa tangi na tamata nrawun rawu ongo, kasa wabaka rongo kocha apa. Ngo se ketul liwa kasama. Dua. Katu kibikia tanon di bola tampu. Tapi boleh mana? Tapi boleh mana? Boleh tanya orang untuk urai kena, orang untuk tak tak kebawa nak lu. Eh, bukan mulai yang aku yang mana orang urai kena. Kau kau nak kau nak kasam? Tapi boleh tanya mana? Tapi boleh tanya mana? Boleh tanya orang itu tapi boleh kira nak lu orang itu tak tak kena buah. Enak serau ni, kau mai kau kau yang orang kaya tu mahu serau ni buru buru kena. Karena ya tu ilmu merasa ni. Oh, ikut mana ngah? Ikut mana ngah? Tahu tak tak kebawa nak lu orang siang ni mana dua? Kira kata lu. Ni orang yang ni buah nak lu. Kakak pakai lana rambun rambuan ni alamu, ni aku siang ni rambun rambuan, boleh tak? Ni siang aku ikut nak kah? Orang rambun rambuan boleh tu ni aku pakai lah, ni siang ni indah nak kah? Bina kah? Itu aku ikut, mau pakai boleh ikut. Aduh tu makanan tu ni sami, sami lima sembilan puluh dua, ni saya sorb nak ngah buana kalau naya lu sarah ramus ramus. Engkau natui, lilo ni tanam tin tu, nona tu nak kul kena seliba. Lebu tu na nona temata tak daka, ele watu oko endo na mata ni tu tau doko. Gay kawa, gay kawa ngoko kona sami ngoko tiki ne tulis, tiki ne ono, na sami tulis ulu kawa. Saat tangi buah na temata nrabun rabu ngoko, kona temata nrabun rabu ngoko tebita, tangi buah mena buni lemangku, ena ndela ni nunggu rere, gay tu ni bangko, ni bagaro rongo, kocio bai na nunggu tangi. Gay baka mulai koya mai na nona rao kete nga. O koya siyo ni tukuna tali tukuna indua, o koya tukuni koya tukuna. Ano buna? Kaki nako na tigni walo ni may dabo tigni nono bola bola lele ng ngo si ni may dabo. E na malio ni nona ni nono bola bola ngo. E na lomando ni wasi ni bola ngo. Sabi ng katawa o ko ay makabig yanda. Tobolya talimanda. Do tobolya talimanda na kalu. E ka o Ellen G White e na testimonies for the church. E na dona malio nono bola bola e ka bangko. So everyone may be able, through his own experience, to set his seal to this, that God is true. He can testify, I needed help, and I found it in Jesus. Everyone was supplied, the hunger of my soul was satisfied. I, believed, I believe in Jesus because he is to me a divine savior. I believe the Bible because I have found it to be the voice of God to my soul. Ayan na po, na itali ito yung kinabiyaw, na ito kinabiyaw, na ito kinabiyaw, na ito kinabiyaw, na ito kinabiyaw. Ayan sa wili ka uti. Ni tangi buhay, hindi na tamatay, wakila na nona nandrawun na buha. E wakila, na nona sa wakila lala na laman na, meron ni baka sinaiti ko yan na kalaw, yan na yan lupo. Ito ni wang ko, ni na baka rarong, buha na kalaw. Kala, turang kinang marama, na kalaw, yan na sinraw ni durma, yung kinang lumam, kipagay, tiyo tali kinang suwa na kasi baka ako sa ustiko. Dorang kau nak tarungnya wen dua, sahaja. Lepas itu tu, nona itu orang bilo, sahaja ibu mama tu orang bilo way. Gaya tarung aku yang tu orang taru. Mau tu kuna yang dibuah, nimbilo ya, whether it's half empty or half full. Ya orang itu pun aku tu ibu mama tu orang bilo nawai. Waktu nawa, dua beranu sen taru, nandu nunga. Kau kau yang nandu nunga, itu sen taru nandu nunga. Ang ibinang kato ko ay makabi, o turang kinang marama. Pagkasama yung ibinang kato, may nontan yung sinilip ni kuha. Na nontan bula, pa itayli ang matanga, kaya pagkatawan ni tiko, e na suwan ka, e na siniraw nga, nina turumay, na turanga, na yalo tambo, may na may lewa na nontan bula. O yan, saro yung bimbiki na, pagkasama yung kato yung tayo ni sami, may na baka naman rabuwa takikenta. Na baka malumalumo takikenta. Gaya liwili ka pagkawin, tinawasi ni bolang ko. Diba nang liwili ka, e na... Ena tiki na tinga lima lang sumbu, may dapat na tiki na tinig walo. At sa na tiki na rusong bulga ruga. Gayon dona ka, siya rata katigun nando ni sami ngo, ena sami tulis ng bulba niyo ya. Ni kalo wendo ba kala kala ntalingan rivira sa kabor na lumad. Sarapan ng rabun rabu atakir. Na kalo wena gayo bagar rong, kibir. Si ngawala kanin bagar rong. Ena wakem bulayir may na nona rarawa kaya nga. Tiki na bitu, kabi kenda. Nang ilo si Chioba, sa tiko baka buli-buli tira, era sa arari waki kwa. Yato may natikin ni Walu, ngay kabi kianda, do topo liya talma na garayda, ni sa ayalo binaga, ko Chioba, sa kalungata na tamata sa wara rabi buha. O yan ano di tukutuku, yan ang sige liwanu kwa. 
Kalau nggak tanah tamat saya nuitek coba, kelam boleh tanah apa? Boleh tanah ngau ni nona rere, luma tangga. Eh rabu apa bila kamu mulai? Boleh tanah ngau ni nona rabu rabu apa? Eh bagi laku ni sih itu nak kait tu buah. Saya ngau lagi rabu rabu apa kaya ngau? Dan rabu rabu apa lagi nimbul apa kaya lo? Eh tadi kan mana kelu? Mimpi saya utak nai tu bagi nimbul apa? Kabukian nona rabu rabu apa kaya lo? Mem, bagi mulai kaya nak kelu. Kena tahu lo. Eh kalau sampai mana nombi tiku kini kuah. Niti kene lima. E tata kaya ni buwa na kelu. Ke buwa kela kwa ni sabi isa utagi kwa na kelu. E yali na mbulo makawa. Sa sera uni kwa na isi sera uni kelu. Sa lesu maye mendo na isi sera uni. E raka i reda kubura bura. Kara buwa kela na besa usaya dhu buwa. Mai na mbulo makawa ki na mbulo buu. Sa teka buu. Me kautani na mandwa. Na lupo i wale. Sa teka buu me baka isulumi. E na ndua. Na isulbo, ibu bapa sulung mengaki nak keluar anak non elok nonton. Turang kita merama, terbo kita non elok lewa. Saru tu mereka nanti ni sama. Do to boleh tali mana? Do to boleh mana? Kerida ni saya lebih nak kacau. Kelam boleh tengah apa? Boleh tengok ada ibu bapa mulai. Enak ibu bapa mulai mana nombor rendre kita ngah. Rendre tak pandai lagu turun mesti ni kuah. Minta to boleh tali mana nak keluar? Enak orang ibu bapa itu nak keluar. Anda kini bulu bola bola dah lah, dah pun tapi suka tu kena dorbo kena kau ni lewa. Nih dah rayu anak kau, ena rawa. Nih serau ni kena, nono nih serau. Kan dah serau telinga, ena ena nono bapa kara ramu tak bapa sulumi bau nak kau. Nanti ramu ramu ni lemah dah. Nih dah laku buah, nak kau ena rumah di kena. Kekawan kau ni kini bintang saya beli kau ti. Ena rawa. Nih tiko buat tak kena. Sekarang lagi nih tiko buat tak kena. E tiko waka woli woli ti kenda Ninda sa rere waka Na kalou Gai waka mula kenda O sa wia maidhaba na singe lewa ni kwa Ka wele nji wai te nono bolbola Ena mar nada ndo ni pepa ipi tu singa bulka ba Ndo na waka sama Bimbi e tukuna be kenda Experience is knowledge derived from experiment Experimental religion is what is needed now. Some, yes, a large number have theoretical knowledge of religious truth, but have never felt the renewing power of divine grace upon their own hearts. They believe in the wrath of God, but put forth no earnest efforts to escape it. Turang kira merama, na na kasabi na katini kuwa. Oh ya, enak nonda. Wakilah serang, ni sa kandi na weekenda, na wakilai buat kena kalau sa seng tunga, ni kawa ke buku, se kawa ke ni baka sama, nembula baka risito, se nembula balut tu. Kati nu baka sama ngo, na experimental religion. Oh ya, nembula, eh, kandi na, na wewakani, na nembula baka alu, eh wewakani taki, baka wewakani taki. Entah lo tu tiga, entah bagaimana ni kandi ni tiga, nanti bagaimana kita nanti bagaimana kita buat kita kalau, oh ya serang anak kasang Andre bilang orang gua, boleh tanya apa? Boleh tanya bunga, era era lo tu tu, era bagaimana bodo tu nak kalau, ya kawal itu kan dibakar sama, kasih serang ni sentuh anak kandi ni, era bagaimana? Enak puni lemana, era serang ni se, bagaimana ni? Zaka zaka, ya tu kita hilir nak bosan ni kalau, kacau ni kini kur ni dibakar sama gua, era bagaimana bodo tu nanti lo ni kalau. Yer sesi yang ni saya tak 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 kira, main dua nangun salah meran rotan ni mungkin. Gondon itu tu ku pasir rola mabiau. Dono tadi ingu, tu ku guna ICU. Nona mati tu ku kau yang na dengot. Setau bi ku angam ni sekali lagi. Sa lakot tu ku ya, atau bi ku ya. Tur tu kan ICU, sehingga suka ngan ni pale, lihat tu kan ni pale, bebe ruat alangkah nama tau. Lihat sudah tu kan ni ICU, ni bukan ni dingot. Saya kira tu kan orang tambu, ia bawa terhati kan. Bau sih bini si, karena tambah kat tengah, mati ni. Tapi kalau nak kita ngah, nak pakai dorki enam bulan ya, enam tahun terik kuas rengam ibu kata. Saya kira tu kan ni tambu, saya kira tu kan ni, bini mesti kita kan orang tu ibu mati, ia tak kapit kan. Di tiba kena ambulans, saat itu gue boleh ambulan. Sa kerap ingkar itu, kau sah positif gue, mesti saat itu gue buka kasam takkan, mesti pisau. Terima kasih ya.
Salarere rawiko ena dua tala langau nunggu. Nagi tobi kau tala mati nunggu. Na mati. Ile bu bikin tanah kaya kaya tu kian na na nono bola bola. Oh merambat tanah ni kuah ni kaya tu bikin. Ile bu bikin tanah sakit latu na mati. Ile bu bikin tanah sakit latu na iti ni iti ni bola bola dah. Ia ente si senga ni si tak 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 ni kian dah. Merau ni tanah rote ni mai kina menon dalam bola. Tomana kau nono bola bola ngai kawan gua. They believe in heaven. Er makam bau tulam malangi. But make no sacrifice to obtain it. Ia rasanya ni saya sorak sorak lagi. Merau ni rawat itu lama lagi. They know a remedy for sin, but do not use it. Ia kelah tu naya wali ni lenga, naya wali bola bola dah. Ia rasanya ni berbagai tak. They know the right, but have no release for it. Ia kelah tu nanti na. Ia kelah tu nak ayu wasi benda tu mera mera muria kata kaba. Ia rasanya ni ngumat tua mera bagai muria. All their knowledge will but increase their condemnation. Kelah. Gua saru ikan rebaki. Bela terapi kahir kila. Ena sin rau di bawah belir. Ena rau di bawah kuri tengah. Anon ra zon rupi. Kau kawan gua nak kena ikuri nau. Napa kau sama gua? They have never tasted and learned by experience that the Lord is good. Sarau tu mereka. Nandau ni sami. Do topu lihat telemanda. Do topu lihat telemanda. Kau tu nandau ni sami. Kerja ni saya nak kucoba, ni saya lebih nak kucoba, ni saya wasibi kucoba, ni saya wali ni lenga kucoba, ni saya nonda in ron ro kucoba, ni saya nonda serau kucoba. Eh serau ni kenda, karena begini saya utangi kenda kucoba. Do topel ya telemanda, ni oke enak bagam boleh kenda main nak kaki tengah. Do topel ya telemanda, belaita ni wali ni lenga kaki tengah. Kecoba, sa kalungata, nata mata, sa bagar rabi, kecoba. Aku biarkan ini kuah, memuji ini. In a statement, erau ni sulia dun dunga nak kalungka, sekarang rau talin dua sulia. Menta mui zapa kini ini kuah, merau ni bagan deh tak, na ulu tangan gua, kena ka, evie nak kat me, bagan mama susu kena tanya saya me, topel ya talamat, topel ya talamat. Kena dorang kamera tak kau ni kuah, bagan mana katak. Nom rubi kelai, bukan dia tak kerana nom rubi wakani. Tuh tur matua, ini lengan cisu. Tapi lihat alamat. Let's make it another try. Give it another try. Tapi lihat alamat. Aku singkala ni tu bagi nimbul lepas dah. Yang lama yang tu kena, yang dongan kau kila. Ni kalau siapa isu itu tiku ni kuah, menda tapi lihat alamat. Kelam boleh tengah tahu. Ni aku kaya apa kata kita kaya? Ya kaya nak cuni, wasit tinik apa nanti kita ni ono. Oh ya, una salah, kini nak bunyi dina, kini nak bunyi bola. Saya sekarang ni terus betul mangku walengai, indo nata mata. Eh, nak bukung muka, tu boleh cuci utar mana? Oh kaya nak kaki tengah, eh nanti dia lah ni kaki tengah. Awak sanita ka? Indo nama ada bu, saya tunggu mata anda, bawa usib, nanti anda tiga bawa bawa. Entah wara kat itu nanda turang, entah nanda u, tak boleh tiga nga, tak boleh ikut tiga nga, nanda turang, merau ni bukan dia tak tiga kena, nampak kasar mungo kibik kenda, niokoya, esah ruibi naka, kasar kelunga tanda temata, eh bagar rapi, tiga nga buah, mindo nanda masuk. Turang nato may kimami may lomalangi, kimami pesuli, kimami talibay kimuni, muni tauro kimami, may kimami no muni. Nitinggo may kimami na ni mami daw, beauty kimuni, baka nanda kuy kimuni, ngui lathabi kimuni, nda tubo na kaluwe na ni mami muri kimuni. Kimami pesuli kimami na kaluwe ni kuwa, na nabay tumber ni alo muni na alo tamo. May baka nita isa katiko na bayo kanyang go. Kau baca uko tak kimi atau bangga nasi ngobi naga, kau ni sana lesu tali mai kena. Ni mami kelu. Sekarang itu apa yang lima nama ni mata itu. Ibu kiki mami merau ni kimi bangga deta kan ni mami ding ding ni kuah. Kata orang kimi ni mami kau si bitalai, dua dua kibe kiki mami. Bina boleh usang nama ni sabar rong. Bina sabar leh nama nama ni sana tumbir kiki mami kalau tak kiki mami. Bina besi ngatau kila isah tunggu. Mereka, yang tuan ini kibik kamu ni, yang mata-mata ni korotale wa, kalau bulat tau muntukina, orang guna ni memasuk, 
ni bako bibina ke ni bako taki kere ni bako kuichi shu ni nima misoro ni nima mi bako mbola amen we can only thank and praise god for his words that has come to us uh, through his servant uh, elder ostring thank you so much for speaking to us so powerfully today it is our prayer that god will sustain you your family as you serve him in his kingdom in the days weeks and years to come we are sending our big vinagavag lewu and loloma from fiji and may god continue to bless you au bob ni vinagavag lewu we kem ni na siamati kumai and a tonda ku ni nonto be korli lewu oka kina we kem ni talanga na siamati kumai na be korli lewu e viti ke na be sai borobora so ni taka na nonto ba tiko na be ba kalunga ta ni kalou and a singa tambongo o sa sure ti kem ni and a mother tell me go and my to money tell no to be grave and a bata bata go we wish you all a blessed sabbath a remainder of the sabbath that is we have to apologize that we we will not be bringing any afternoon program and we hope that you will spend the afternoon wisely and probably some intimate time with our lord the lord of the sabbath if you have any questions feel free to contact us on our toll free line 813 and uh, leave a message with us or contact us on hope channel fiji at hopestudios.org again hope channel fiji at hopestudios.org i invite you all again to join us next sabbath and until then stay safe and be blessed